story about a real-life con woman is so captivating to viewers. Plus, Bob Odenkirk on the ups and downs of his career in an exclusive conversation on his brand new memoir. And a clip from The Vault featuring Oscar winner Javier Bardem. But first, here's today's pop star. Lots to get to in pop star today. Savannah, is it Rami and Michelle's wedding? Or <laughs> Rami. Rami. Well, I might butcher this one too. First up, Fantastic Beast, The Secrets of Dumbledore. Break out your wands, everybody. On Monday, Warner Brothers dropped a new trailer for the third chapter in the Harry Potter prequel series. The new preview teasing fans with a big return to Hogwarts as Jude Law steps back into the role of young Dumbledore and prepares to face off with one of the wizarding world's most infamous villains. I'm sorry to disturb you, Albus, but I've just received troubling news. Tell me, what is it? It's Grindelwald. The time is closed, my brothers and sisters. Our war with the Muggles begins today! The world as we know it is coming undone. If we're to defeat him, you'll have to trust me. All right, Fantastic Beast, this Beast, The Secrets of Dumbledore hits theaters April 15th. Oh, thank God that's done. Next up, <laughs> Dwayne Johnson, The Rock Never Fails to Tug at Our Heartstrings with this thoughtful post on social media and a new video. He's sharing a special moment from a visit to his grandparents' gravesite with his mom in Hawaii. I mean, Daddy, this is for you. And for all of you out there who's lost someone, this is for you. Oh, that's nice of you, huh? go for a walk. Johnson adding in the caption, life moves so fast, mm -hmm. how important it is to just slow down, sit here, reminisce and listen to her sing, play her ukulele and tell all her stories. Some wise words from The Rock there. Sweet. Next up, Michael Douglas, the Oscar winning is Amy, winner is aiming to catch lightning in a bottle with his next big role. Douglas set to star as Benjamin Franklin in a new show that's headed to Apple TV Plus. The limited series is going to be set in the later years of Franklin's career, around the time he engineered America's alliance with France and peace with England. That'd be between 1778 and 1783, if my <laughs> memory that. recalls. Well Is it well Romy or Romy? Yeah, it's weird Romy, the things you remember. <laughs> Douglas will also produce the project based on Stacey Schiff's book, A Great Improvisation, Franklin, France, and the Birth of America. No word yet on when that show's scheduled to premiere, but it does look good already. Mm -hmm. All right, finally, the first First day of the month can only mean what? one thing. That's Jenna Bush Hager is here with a new book. <laughs> yes, there I am. I'm so happy to be a correspondent on Pop Star. Let's do it. Are you all ready? Yes. yes. We have a countdown, I think. Are we counting down on the plaza? I hope so. Three, if not, three, three two, two, one. It is Groundskeeping by Lee Oh, thank Cole. God, it's that one. It is there a they beautiful, are. beautiful novel about an inspiring writer who takes classes at a local Woo! college and becomes the groundskeeper. He falls oh. madly in love with a girl named Alma, who is very different. It takes place in 2016, oh. but it's about family, unconditional love, and what binds us. Y'all, mm -hmm. in a time where everybody's so divided, yeah. we need this but book. Groundskeeping. Yeah. Okay. Hate it. You can head to today.com yes. slash read with Jenna or use that QR code for more information. Join the book club. There's not only a book club, it's a whole conversation. Then you can buy the book or mm -hmm. be like me and wait till the movie comes out. <laughs> Do that, yeah. but you know what else you can do? You can what? join us tomorrow live on our plaza. We're going to celebrate the third anniversary. Three oh. years. I've turned three. Oh of my read gosh. With Jenna, I know also, because oh. there's 35 books I still got to read right now. <laughs> three years of read with Jenna. We have Nancy a lot. Of yes, yes. And also, and also it may be Nancy's favorite day. It's Read Across America Day. Yeah. So we're going to have a really oh. cool story. Oh, way to go, Jenna. Way to go. And now the reason we call the show Popstar Plus, a few more headlines for you, and we'll start with Euphoria. The Zendaya-led series is making its way into HBO history. Sunday's season two finale was the network's second most watched show since 2004. The grungy high school mega hit coming in second only to, that's right, the mega hit Game of Thrones. Of course, you can believe it, it's already been three years since Game of Thrones wrapped up that show's finale and it scored a whopping 19.3 million viewers. A good sign for the upcoming spinoff, House of the Dragon, which is scheduled to premiere later this year. Finally, America's Got Talent Extreme in last night's episode of the AGT spinoff, a 90-year-old grandmother stunned judges when she came out to perform a fiery stunt with her 24-year-old grandson. Lillian held on tight to Hunter as the pair rode through, count them, five walls of fire. Well, there's...
there's the extreme part of AGT Extreme. No surprise, all three judges gave Lillian and Hunter a big yes. And that's going to do it for your Popstar Plus headlines. But we got a lot more coming up. Anna Klumski is going to give us a glimpse into her new miniseries that a lot of people are talking about. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. You might know Anna Klumski from her Emmy-nominated role on Veep or the beloved 90s movie My Girl. Well, lately she's starring in Inventing Anna, a new miniseries about Anna Delvey, a real-life heiress who stole money from New York elites. Klumski plays a journalist investigating Delvey's story, and she told us what she hopes viewers take away from the show. I think Anna Delvey... I didn't know anything, and uh, and it was really fun when I like told younger people, like my brother or something, that uh, you know I'm going to do this show about this young woman who who conned a lot of people, and then you know my brother's like <gasps> Anna Delvey, like he was like so excited, and yeah, so I uh, I got to come to it this way. I might have a story. Her name is Anna Delvey. Or Anna Sorokin, no one's sure. She's either a rich German heiress or she's flat broke. The charges are insane. You know, Shonda was interested in a lot more than just adapting a salacious, you know, kind of rich people story, right? Like she was interested in so much more about, about how people treat each other, how people deal with each other. Who, who's privy to whose information? You know, um, why? What are the sanctions for? Are the sanctions correct? Uh, do they need to be adjusted? Um, you know, how, how far can you get into somebody's life without harm being done? You know, the, all of these things. She is everything that is wrong with America right now. I am famous. I mean, I know why our telling of it captivates me, but I, it's it's honestly still a question I have of what about her actual story has has lasted this, you know, already. Like, it, it, it's got legs and people still care about it. And I think that's wonderful. Obviously, selfishly, I think it's wonderful. Um, but it is sort of surprising. But yeah, like, we're living the actual phenomenon of her gripping personality. You know, she definitely does remind you of those, of the types of people that, that do kind of just grip on um, on the people that they meet and they just make them want to please them. And so I think that society is doing that <laughs> in a weird way. And I'm part of it. Millions of dollars. Hi, Anna. I just had some questions. I have a question. What's you wearing? You look poor. It's something I really, I, connected to with playing Vivian was that she just really, really loves her craft. She loves the craft of journalism the way that I love the craft of acting. I mean, I think on the very surface, she and I both are really, really fast mental processing. You know, like we're, we've just got a ton of information and we're, and it's all, it's all game. 
so Jessica is um, is one of our co-producers. So she's she's given our blessing all the way um, from the get-go. And I, like we, you know, we, we didn't have like lunches. You know, we didn't do that sort of thing because I I actually was tasked with not matching. I'm not matching her. Some of our our cast members um, had that assignment to you know to be playing a real person that is is known and and um, and to match them and, and mine we were fictionalizing um, so we're very very inspired obviously we're the article's the article but because the article is the thing that we were keeping most closely matched that is sort of what I went with I went with all of the written word that I could I read all of Jessica's articles I read all of her notes um, she's a she, she's a copious note taker and I and thank you <laughs> um, you know especially as we were discussing for, discussing for such a cerebral um, character it almost feels like the written word you're gonna you're you're gonna unlock a lot more through their voice um, uh, on the page and um, and I just felt like it was that that was my way in it, it was it was like a I don't know it was like a decoding um, the written word and I loved that it helped me with with all my choices I think Anna Delvey, you know, is up to her, and uh, yeah, I, th I think she's, I think she's impossible to know. Um, I've never met her personally, so I'm not going to really get into who she is. But you know, I, again, another question: How much can you ever know a person? Right? Is your is the way you see green the way I see green? None of us are gonna know, like ever. <laughs> So, yeah, um, and you know, it's 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 for her to know, and it's for other people to um, to determine how much it matters to them. I hope that people. It's like the slow burn that I always hope for after a show. You know, I, I really hope that you know, as they walk around in their own lives, making their own choices, they they have another platform upon which to, to decide, um, you know, what they think is good and bad, what they think is right and wrong, what is okay with them about the way people treat other people. You know, I feel like we present so many great and important and relevant questions about today's, we use the word society so much, but it's true, um, you know, about today's society that I think that, you know, an audience member would be remiss uh, to not adopt some of those questions themselves. You know, so that's that's. I just hope that they they come, you know, come out of it with 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 some some personal debate. It's good. It's good. We should mention you can catch Inventing Anna right now streaming on Netflix. Next up, a visit with the great Bob Odenkirk. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter, in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet, right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. 
And we're back on Popstar Plus. Bob Odenkirk is unmistakable for his roles, of course, in Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Now in the new memoir, Comedy, 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 Drama, he put pen to paper about his own career in showbiz. And he told us all about it today in Studio 1A. and comedian Bob Odenkirk is one of Hollywood's most beloved stars. He's a four-time Emmy nominee for his starring role in Better Call Saul and shined on the beloved Breaking Bad, and now he's sharing his story. It's a new memoir. Comedy, 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 drama. Bob, good morning, good morning. How are hey, you? Hey, I'm good. I'm just Thank happy you so you're, much. I'm just happy you're here in this chair. That's so nice of you to say. We were talking I, about how you had, you call it a heart incident. Well, I want to just speak about it properly. Yeah. Heart doctors tell me that what I had was a heart incident, not technically a heart attack, but I don't know what the difference is. <laughs> my, I was turning blue and not breathing, and my, uh, my heart was arrhythmic. And it needed to get back to a rhythm. Where I don't really understand how it works, but I just know that I wouldn't have survived. if. Where uh, did it happen? And how I was in the studio of Shooting Better Call Saul, our final season, yeah. which is going to premiere on April 18th. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be great if you're a Better Call Saul fan. Yeah. I can't wait for you to see this. But we were shooting a great scene, me and Ray Seahorn and Patrick Fabian and some other people. Yeah. And uh, we had gone off to our waiting area, yeah. and luckily I stayed in the area with the other actors, because if I'd gone to my trailer, I wouldn't be here right Oh, now. my God. So I went down, and they uh, set up the alarm, and, and people came out. And uh, Rosa Estrada, our health officer, was a, a medic who served in the armed forces for a tour, and she came out and started CPR on me and saved my life. Did some people have epiphanies after something like that? I'm having a very slow epiphany, yeah. even right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the epiphany was simply that my life is pretty damn great. Oh, great. And I should yeah. appreciate it and the people around oh. me. Um, honestly, that's, you know, I think people do have epiphanies when they have a near-death experience. Um, and oftentimes it's, I have to change something, you know. And I think my epiphany is I have to appreciate what I have because hmm. it's really great. And I've got great people around me. And um, for some reason, people are very <laughs> nice to me well, and, and were so nice on social media when I had this heart, at well, heart attack. Well, Bob, um, this book is filled with all of that appreciation. But what you found I love is a lot of what you appreciate your life or maybe the things that didn't happen the way you mm -hmm. wanted to. Yeah. You were talking about once where you were you were you were trying for that Steve Carell job at the office and you yeah. wrote. Um, one trick to surviving Hollywood's beatdown is to keep making new things in spite of every no. Yeah. To somehow stay in touch with the joy that brought you to the game. It can be hard to do when you're, there's me and Chris Farley backstage, yeah. backstage in Second City. That's me and Robert Smigel, yeah. a great writer of sketches. And uh, my oh, my agent, Ari Emanuel, so now how, world beater, no. amazing guy. So how did and, you pick yourself up when there was a when there was a swing and a miss like that? You know, I always had a weird faith in this business that if you came to it with a fresh idea, that you you'd get a, a hearing, a chance, mm. and it's really true. I mean, showbiz loves new faces and reinvented, you know, characters and faces. So I uh, I think it's just been a great business, and I just believed I, even in the hardest moments, the sense that I had something to offer if I just was patient and set to writing, which is how I started as a writer. Well, as a writer on SNL, you wrote one of the most famous sketches, uh, Living in a Van Down by the River, the Chris Farley sketch. Motivational speaker, yeah. That was that was to die for. It's one of those that lives on yeah, and on and on. Um, just real It's one quick. of my favorite things I ever did in show business. Really? My daughter asked me once, What's your favorite thing you've done? And I said it was doing this sketch at Second City every night for us the summer that I was there. And I wrote it for Chris, and he wouldn't quit until he made every performer laugh. You could see him making yeah, see. Uh, one by one. They're Christine dropping. Applegate and David Spade laugh. He wouldn't yeah. quit. He yeah. would just keep doing the character right in your face until you broke up. Are you happy you made the turn to drama? Um, I didn't even realize it was happening, man. All of a sudden, I'm in this drama stuff, and people are liking it. Um, yeah, it's great. Um, you know, you dig deeper into a character, and I've had such wonderful writing mm -hmm. with uh, the writers of Breaking Bad and now Better Call Saul. I've been very blessed. 
You are such a nice guy, Bob. Oh, I'm so nice happy. I, I hope people read this book. It's called Comedy, 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 Drama. It's full of not just stories about the business, but also stories about your life. And I think yeah. a lot of people are going to enjoy them. And also, if you're starting out in the business and you're wondering, can I take a crack at this? Yeah. This book is definitely for you. You can find more of it at today.com. Love Bob Odenkirk. Mr. Show, one of my favorite shows to this day. Bob Odenkirk's new memoir is available now. And coming up, we're dedicating our From the Vault segment to Oscar winner, Javier Bardem. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. In the City of Angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. Javier Bardem earned another Oscar nomination this year, his fourth if you're keeping track at home, this time for his portrayal of Ricky Ricardo in Being the Ricardos. Of course, he won the Academy Award for his performance as a psychopath assassin in No Country for Old Men. What a movie that was back in 2008. Well, he spoke to today about that part. Here is today's From the Vault. The Coen brothers have a new thriller out. It is called No Country for Old Men, and it has taken home two Golden Globes. The movie is set in 1980s West Texas. It's the chilling tale of three lives that intersect. When one makes a life-changing discovery worth millions, another hunts him down to get it back, and the third tries to set it all right. Academy Award-nominated actor Javier Bardem stars in No Country for Old Men. Good morning to you. Good morning. You know, like a lot of the characters you run into in this movie, your character runs into, I was blown away. <laughs> Literally, by the movie, by the acting, by everything about it. By the way, congratulations on the Golden Globe, Thank Best you Supporting much. Actor. I was sorry you didn't get to walk down the red carpet. Was that sort of a bummer? Um, uh, honestly, yeah, no, honestly, no, because you, really? you don't have to get dressed and do the carpet. You are in the sofa on the coach. And Having a drink and so relax. you're sitting in your underwear <laughs> watching it essentially. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I will be on my underwear, but I <laughs> definitely was watching it on TV. Yeah, well, so many people <laughs> thought you would get that nod. So were you surprised or just? Uh, I'm, I'm quite surprised about everything. I, I have to say, since the very first moment I did the movie, having in mind that I'm a Spanish actor doing a movie with the Coen Brothers, that's quite a surprise. So. Everything beyond that is kind of a gift for me. I think it's extraordinary the impact that the movie you No know, Country for All Men has had in people, has in people, why and will have in people. Why do you think it's had that impact? I don't know, I think it's about the coins, about their work, about their talent, about how they are able to put together such a big masterpiece of a book by Cormac McCarthy and, and put it out there in a very uh, beautifully constructed way but also easy easy to for everybody but at the same time profound in in the way that uh, there's a big statement behind the movie that makes the movie more powerful is uh, is beyond entertainment it's something that is it has its own weight. You know, you talk about the effort of the Coen brothers, but you yourself, you had to create this character, Chigurh, and you had little to go on. Mm -hmm. In the book, about all you know is that the guy has blue eyes, which mm -hmm. you don't I have, don't have and yet you create this this very menacing mm -hmm. presence with the gait and the toy costing and obviously the killing. How do you even go about creating Chigurh? What, what was the process like for you? Um, I guess it's about really 
trying to bring what he represents, which is kind of the symbolic idea of violence, into a human behavior, which unfortunately we know, we are aware of that in a lot of behaviors out there. Uh, we, we are part of the violence and we have violence inside. Whatever we like it or not, we have to face it and we have to uh, really control it. Uh, he can't and that's the way you have to more or less understand where he's coming from, what he wants and try to put it out there and create this character that is just that, a violent machine. But was it hard to inhabit that character? Because just to watch you mm -hmm. is difficult. I don't know, I, I don't think it was especially hard. Uh, it was very hard to wear that haircut, <laughs> but it's not very, really hard to be him just because it's just fiction. It's not something that you take with you when you get back to the hotel. Yeah, tell me about the haircut because a lot of thought went into that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a very good idea of the coins. They did it, they, that's, uh, it came from them, and I think it's very helpful because make the whole character totally insane because it goes so against what he represents, this beautiful um, Prince Valiant kind of haircut that uh, it's totally, I don't know, uh, opposite what, of what it should be. Now, after you play a role like this, do you want to just do a something light-hearted, <laughs> silly? Uh, well, yeah, maybe. I don't. Know. I don't think in that terms. I just think about what the quality of the role is, and if I mean, I mean, I don't want to kill anybody else in the next <laughs> I'm glad couple of that. years <laughs> in movies. I mean, so, no, I sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank Congratulations. You. Good luck with the Oscar nomination. Something tells me we'll be hearing your name a lot more <laughs> in the weeks and months ahead. Thank you. And guess what? It just so happens to be Javier Bardem's birthday today. So, Javier, happy birthday to you out there. Another pop star plus in the books. Tomorrow we've got one of the stars of the Gilded Age. Until then, bye-bye. Welcome to Today All Day. All day? Today all day. All day. This is a long oh, way of man. asking yeah. who's your favorite okay. character you've ever played. Oh, the right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> What is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cut. Cold Cut. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today, with simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Wow. Okay. <laughs> look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look, look so good. No, it doesn't look good. <laughs> will you judge us in a cook-off? I yes. will. And okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. Rockefeller Plaza. It is fun here, y'all. We have a great crowd. Temps are low, spirits are high. They are decked out in red, white, and blue. Are you feeling it? The Olympic spirit. Welcome to our little cozy home on the plaza for the next.
two weeks. The Winter Olympics have officially kicked into high gear. That's a beauty. It's like a dream come true. <laughs> Super Bowl 56. This is who I'm tailgating with right here. All I did was dip this and oh. this, and we got that. It's time to kick off our 70th anniversary celebration. Cheers to everyone. It's a brighter third hour. Yeah. 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 That's right, it's the Polar Bear Plunge. Talk about your weather app. Let it snow, baby. Hi. Welcome to the making of today. It's where we reveal the secrets on how we put our little show together. And <laughs> as you just saw, we started off 2022 on a strong note. Plenty of big events, interviews, memorable moments. And we are happy to bring you all the behind the scenes things with my pals, Dylan and Chanel. Oh, we're Yay. happy to be doing this with you. And he's this Al Roker. Is, of course. This yeah. is oh, so exciting. We can't wait to share what goes into making our TV magic. But let's start with what we and the whole country had our eyes on for the last two weeks, the Winter Olympics. It was definitely thrilling to watch the finest athletes in the world compete in these winter games. And while you see the sights and sounds of the Olympic Park, it actually does take a TV village and then some to produce hours and hours of Olympic broadcasts. Craig takes us behind the scenes. The Olympics are always about superlatives. Does it get any more precise than that? Athletes have been practicing and competing for years just to make it here. The most fun thing is front row seat to history. So we thought we'd share our own TV production marathon. You got it. One, two, three, four, five. Behind the scenes of the Winter Games. Hey, Craig, morning. Hello to Savannah. Good morning. The highly anticipated women's figure skating short program uh, has been underway behind it. First up, nearly 19 hours in the air to Beijing. Just getting to Beijing felt like an Olympic sport. Uh, we've cleared customs. Everyone who touches down in Beijing for the Winter Games is greeted by a hazmat suit wearing welcoming committee. Finally, we made it to the starting line of the Olympics. Over the course of two weeks, there's 200 hours of Olympic coverage across three platforms in six time zones for NBC. We are in our workspace at the International Broadcast Center, which is also called the IBC. We have our Today team here, small but mighty. They are amazing. And then over there, we have the NBC local affiliates. These games are like nothing we've seen before. In fact, sometimes it was hard to see anything at all. No one, just me. So right now we are shooting Craig's life in the bubble spot. We're gonna raise a glass of okay. Team USA. How is it? It's, um, it's a screwdriver. Okay. It's all right. This is terrible. <laughs> what is your most exciting moment so far in Beijing? Nathan Chen, watching him win gold in person and seeing that like sense of relief mm -hmm. just like take over his body, it was nice. What's the hardest part about covering these Olympics? Being away from the family, no doubt. Happy Valentine's Day! Oh, oh that's sweet. Right? Hey, you know, get, get me a little bit of a clip tip. At the end of these very long days and nights, none of this would be possible without our incredible crews. Well, my name is Ray Farmer, this is Randy. Hey guys. I'm camera, Randy is audio. audio. Ricardo back here, he is the master audio technician. And Sam, you can see, is the main camera operator. 24 7, the show goes on with many more teams of dedicated people around the globe. This is the LA Bureau of the Today Show, where this spot is all going to come together. Bringing it all across the finish line, we produced 36 hours of the Today Show in 17 days. Our executive producer, Tom Mazzarelli. In our own version of the finish line, the control room, where all of the work over in China, back here, in London, everywhere, makes it, it gets on the air. This is where it all happens. Uh, just really amazing what they were mm -hmm. able to pull off. A lot. Incredible. Uh, and while the Olympics were an extraordinary undertaking inside such a massive bubble, but in the end turned out to be easy compared to scoring one of those <laughs> plush 
panda mascots, uh, Bing Boon Boon. Yes. Bing Boon Boon, yes. Bing Boon. And if you did get your hands on one of those, you're probably, I mean, just one in a million. And actually, we had a once-in-a-lifetime event that happened this month, mm -hmm. too, the Winter Olympics and Super Bowl 56, both happening at the same time and both airing on... NBC. No. <laughs> right. Seriously. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yes. So just for you and you at home, the, the team at NBC Sports celebrated with a once in a lifetime event on our show by making it snow in all of all places, Santa Monica, California. And you were right there in the center of the action. That's right. It, it was pretty amazing how this all came together in just a few hours. They were able to turn an outdoor mall in downtown sunny Santa Monica into a winter wonderland. And here's how it happened. Sunny Santa Monica, California, known for its warm weather and beautiful beaches. But that was about to change. The mission? A crazy one. Make it snow at an outdoor mall in Santa Monica where the average snowfall is 0.0 inches. That's because it never happens. But we took up the challenge and assembled a team that could pull it off. Al's going to be in Santa Monica. Production manager Kylie Hose and Today Show director Jim Gaines, both at 30 Rock in New York, worked on how to make this look good on TV. And they can actually make it snow. At the Santa Monica Place Mall, where it was a balmy 70 degrees, we had to wait until after shoppers cleared out. Then we went to work. The folks at NBC Sports bringing in eight trucks filled with 40 tons of ice. 12 snowmaking machines were mounted on the roof, giving us the power to make snow on command. All of this to celebrate a once in a lifetime event, the Winter Olympics and the Super Bowl, both airing on NBC. And while the fresh powder was growing by the hour, our LA editorial team put the finishing touches on the piece that would air that morning on the Today Show. Talk about your weather app. Editor Tommy Tripotis and associate producer Sammy Davis, working from their homes, got the job done in record time. Talk about your weather app. Woohoo! Let it snow, baby! And after five hours of snowmaking, I got a chance to talk to some of our NBC affiliates from all around the country. It gets chilly here in, in the morning, but not so chilly. I can't get it. I can't take a pass from uh, my producer, Max Paul. A fabulous thing. So here we are. Yes. Uh, and, and they've got snowballs at the ready. You son of a... Anyway. <laughs> Turned out Max had been choreographing the 95 mile per hour ice balls for weeks. Hey, it's not so hard. That's better. Trying to kill me here, Koosh. After surviving these snowball attacks, the place finally looking like a chilly winter's morning. Al's on the road. He's in Santa Monica, California. That does not look like no, Santa Monica, No, we don't California. believe you. Mission accomplished. Uh, my producer, Max Paul, uh, making basically an ice ball. Oh, and no. throwing Those are the best hard. guys. So, but here's what, <laughs> hopefully Max isn't watching because I've stored several uh, snowballs in my freezer. No way. So that next time I go to L.A., <laughs> it's coming for you, Max. Oh, now, we want to see a behind the scenes of how you get them from your freezer oh, to I've L.A. Got, I've got technology. He's got ways. <laughs> All right, well, speaking of, we showed you how we brought uh, snow to L.A. Well, Hoda and Jenna dove into freezing water for a polar plunge. We're gonna show you how that really played out when we come right back. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at eight on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. 
Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Making Up Today. So much of what you see on the air with Hoda and Jenna, it's really so fun to watch. But have you ever thought about what it takes to pull off all their stunts and celebrations? Well, you are about to see the making of the coldest and perhaps most playfully controversial <laughs> stunt in a long time. It was the first, likely not the only, annual Hoda and Jenna Polar Plunge. Bundle up as Jenna takes us along for a chilly ride. One of our favorite parts of this job is the excuse to dive into something we wouldn't normally do. And this time, we wanted to dive in, literally. To celebrate the new year, our producers brainstormed a bucket list series. And top of the list, a polar plunge. It's hard to think of things that they haven't done before. And it's January, so we thought, what about a polar bear plunge? Average temperatures in New York in January hover around 30 degrees which means our staff was questioning our willingness to commit. No way. I, I was there for the pitch of it, and I said, sure, but there is a 0% chance the ladies will do a polar plunge. We thought, oh, wow, Hoda and Jenna are not going to do this. They're going to back out. When they got down here, they seemed a little bit more apprehensive, especially about going in all the way. And then it happened. I'm shocked they're even doing this, because I don't know if I would do it. <laughs> when they get in that moment where it's like, if, if they're going to go all in or not, they always go all in. Hoda and Jenna always surprise me. I couldn't believe it. First of all, I would never do that. And the fact that they could do it made me feel like they were rock stars. That was like the ultimate rock star move. But the reactions to our plunging were mixed. <gasps> Wait, what? <laughs> Sparking a controversy in the now viral moment. You just put your head in. I thought you said we were going to dive together. All you did was just put your head no, in the say all I did. I was all the way to something wet. It just wasn't as dramatic. I dove under and you just went like this. Even our own staff was split. I think Jenna's right. Hoda cheated. She got her hair wet, which in the cold, getting your hair wet, that's a big deal. But still, you gotta, you gotta go all the way. I know this might be controversial, but I had to watch that piece 15 times because I was the one approving it and never once in watching it did I think Hoda Kotb did not do a polar plunge. Bucket list item officially checked off all in a day's work. Honestly, it's it's amazing that they'll say yes to the crazy stuff we come up with. Because this show is the ultimate girl party. It's invigorating because we can literally come up with anything and they're gonna do it. Shout out to the ladies for showing up ready to play, right? We're in slim. It. That's yes. right. Tell them about the shrinkage, Jerry. <laughs> like a frightened turtle. <laughs> so you just jump right in there. <laughs> Speaking of diving in, Dylan, that's uh, what you had to do, really diving right in when you returned from maternity leave. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a little tough. Yeah. I mean, you know, baby Rusty arrived earlier than expected. I was able to spend four months with him at home, as well as Cal and Ollie, of course. But after all that quality time with them, I did have to come back to work. And here's a peek of just how my first day went. After four months of maternity leave, it was time for me to go back to Studio 1A. Can you believe I'm going back to work? Yeah, you can't go back to work yet. Why? <laughs> yeah. You don't yeah. want to go back to work? I don't want mom to go back to work. Huh. Are you going to miss me? Yeah. yeah. I've got all my clothes laid out. Ready. I'm ready to go. I am like a big preparer the night before, so I've got my coffee here. Muffins made for the boys, so that they've got breakfast tomorrow. I've got all my pump parts ready to go. My outfit's picked out. I guess I'm ready. I'm up by 5 o'clock the next morning, preparing to leave without waking anyone up. I'm back. I haven't been here in so long. I don't even know what half this stuff is. Once I'm settled in, it's time to get ready. 
All right, makeup's done. I've got my notes here. I'm going to prep for our interview today with Cynthia Nixton and Christine Bransky. And I have our morning meeting phone call um, now. So I'm going to call into that. All right, now it is time to go get my hair done. Um, and does anybody recognize this sound? Mm, always be pumping, that's what I say. Yay, I'm back! With that, I'm pumped to walk onto the set to start the show. Hello! Hey, hey! Good morning, everybody. It's a brighter third. Hey. Oh, thank hey. you! Oh, thank you. Can we just do one thing? Sure. Like just, shh, shh, shh. I just want to, I just want to play. Okay, well, I did it. The show's over. Um, and to be honest, it feels like I have never left. Um, in a good way. I just feel like you just jump right back into it and I figured out my routine and it's the same routine that I had um, before I left. I think the difference is I'm going to go home now with three kids instead of two. So I feel like I might get more exhausted later on today. <laughs> I'm back and no more babies. I'm not going away anytime soon. You guys are stuck with me. So after my first day, Calvin comes home with a note, and I'm not sure if it's <laughs> good job, mom, mm -hmm. or good God, mom. Oh, wow. <laughs> either, either way, way either the way. sentiment right. was there. Nice. I was happy, and it's hanging on my wall, so it's nice to be back. We like that. <laughs> yes. We're glad you are back. And, and we celebrated your return, and coming up next, we're going to celebrate the Today Show. It had a momentous milestone. Don't go anywhere. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter, in this closet. I took shelter, right in this closet, right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We recently had a big anniversary here at Today, 70 years. It was an honor celebrating with you at home and with all of New York City. That's right. And thanks to some help from our good friend, Holly Palmieri, with Today's Show Radio on Sirius XM, we got an inside look at the big milestone. It is a big anniversary. Real big. On January 14th, 2022, the Today Show marking 70 incredible years on the air. But the fun actually started the day before. Here this we is go. historic. Hey. When Odin, Carson, and I got to flip the switch and light up the Empire State Building in honor of this major milestone. To be able to flip the switch and see it go orange incredible. for us. Then it was off to Studio 1A to get to work. Rehearsals are starting. I want to show you what's going on here behind the scenes. On special show days like this, with lots of moving parts, we like to run through everything so that our crew, from everybody in the control room, folks on the set, and of course, our fellow anchors, know what the game plan is before the show gets going. Join us as we look back and toast an American institution. Today's Friday, January 14th. 
2022. After rehearsals were done, we reflected on the momentous occasion. It's pretty incredible to be here today. It's never lost on me, yeah. every day. Because right. I grew up watching the show like yeah. so many people. I right. watched Brian Gumbel when I was a little boy and I right. thought, you know, maybe, maybe one day, right. maybe one day, and now every day. And to be a part of 70 years of such an American tradition in New York City, is, it's really like, I've been saying I feel like I'm like Norm or Cliff from <laughs> Cheers. Like I just, someone invited me into this, this cool place and I can sit and hang out. This was actually my idea, to bring back the old school weather chalkboard for my weather hits throughout the morning. Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, this is the way we did weather in 1952. Uh, Dave Garraway would get a call from the, the chief meteorologist at what then was called the U United States Weather Bureau. And on the air, he would tell Dave where to drive draw the front. Dave would do it live. He brings the lights on, the low pressure, the sunshine, the rain, and of course now we do computer graphics. And, and it's, it, but, but there's something very special about this. And then, showtime. This morning, guys, we're taking time to celebrate those seven decades of informing, inspiring, and hopefully making you smile. Yes, A huge you. celebration for an even bigger day. Let's raise a glass, you guys, to a wonderful program that we all get to be a part of. And a big thanks to all of you who have been watching us at home for 70 years. Oh, Thank it's you been for allowing us to be a part of your family. Coming into your home. Happy 70th today! I mean, 70 is a big one. It is. Yeah. To be part of this iconic program. You've been here since honor. the beginning. Yes, right. <laughs> uh, in fact, I was here when they started building the studio. And I said, this Garraway guy, he's not bad. Yeah, when they started building the building. That's right. Yeah, that's what's impressive. All right, besides the 70th anniversary, the Olympics were a pretty big celebration here, of course, which meant we got to open up the plaza again to the crowds, to the guests, and, of course, our favorite, Ah, the yes. Food. Chefs were finally able to come back in person to cook for us, and you wouldn't believe just how much work goes into each short cooking segment. Take a look. You gotta smell these. Can I smell? Here at the Today Show, cooking segments only last about three minutes long. I call it the chicken shake. Chicken shake. But the prep that goes into them can start weeks in advance. It's my job about ideally two or three weeks before the segment airs to connect with the chef, decide on recipes that would be good for the broadcast and that our viewers at home would be interested in making. Once the recipe is decided on, the segment producer passes it along to our culinary producer and food stylist, Katie Stillo. My job is to make culinary magic every single day. So from the recipe, we take that and we turn it into our food breakdown, which is where we write each individual step that the chef will be performing on live TV. It's Katie's job to shop for the ingredients and pull all of the necessary cooking equipment for each recipe. This room is full of endless amounts of bowls, plates, cookware, anything you could think of, we have it. Some of the food is prepped the day before, and the rest is cooked the morning of the segment. That's also where the collaboration with our set design team is on full display. Hi, I'm Ed Helbing, production designer for the Today Show. Uh, my team does all the set design for food segments. Generally, they're sort of formulaic, but with bigger things like the Super Bowl, we do a lot of decoration for the tables, some backgrounds, and just get to dress it up a little bit more. A little bit of soy sauce. Just Finally, it's time for this segment to air. E is phonetically similar to a word that represents uh, prosperity and abundance. So it's everything great. has meaning and everything has so much thought behind it. Sharing a meal together live feels so good. Cold fingers, warm hearts, you know that type of thing? It reminds me of Chinese New Year when the family gets together and we're all cooking together and hanging out next to the But the hardest part? <laughs> Putting the fork down and moving to the next segment. That is insane. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> we love getting to dig in and trying these amazing dishes. When we come back, we're going to dig in and answer some questions from our fans who joined us on the plaza. We'll be right back. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts.
What do you see right now with Putin? And do you think he's a rational actor? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? The sanctions did not deter. Can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back. Now it's part of the show where we answer some of your questions. This time we got fans out on our plaza, our Olympic plaza at the time, to participate. I'm about to graduate from college and I was wondering about your best advice on following your dreams. So what do you say? Your best advice on following your dreams? You know, it, to be open to, mm -hmm. to everything. You know, I wanted to be work in television. Mm -hmm. I want, didn't want to be on TV. Uh, and my department chairman put me up for a job in the sophomore year doing television weather. And I thought, oh, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it worked out okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, Deborah, Deborah was a theater major. And, oh, really? And I didn't know that. that. Switched to journalism. I didn't know that. Well, I, I think that is yeah. such good advice because, you know, especially I took the route where I went to the small markets, you know, but I had to leave home that first yeah moment where it's like, oh, I have to move on my own and live by myself in a city I've never been to before, Erie, Pennsylvania. But I'm glad I did it. Your your life in your 20s is in your full life, you know, right. so I know you're going to miss your friends. I know you're going to miss, you know, everything you're so used to, but you have to just take that chance to try something yep. and you can always come back. I want to know what's your favorite rom-com Okay, so your favorite rom-com. I think we know yours. My best friend's wedding yes. in Notting Hill. Okay. I, I love Julia <laughs> oh, Roberts. Two yeah, I just love Julia Roberts uh -huh. and Notting Hill, and it's just funny. See, and I love, like, anything with Tom Hanks. So to me, you've got mail, uh -huh. almost the same as Sleepless in Seattle. Like, right. those are my That's favorite rom-coms. I can uh, see that. I love Hitch. You know, uh, mm -hmm. it's just, this is where you live. What was your first date like? First That's a date. fun question. My, I remember mine because, so Brian and I, if, if you follow us on Instagram, you know that like we can be socially awkward sometimes. So we went out for brunch and we met up and we're at a restaurant in Boston. Like all the tables are really close together, yeah. kind of like in New York City. So he had to kind of like scoop between the tables, but a girl had her purse there. So as he's getting to his seat, he steps in her purse oh. and he goes, would you look at that? My foot is in your purse. <laughs> And you laughed? And, it was, and I thought it was the funniest thing. I couldn't stop laughing. It was like the best way the to start off a first date. She was in shock. She's oh. like, you know. But and he Uche. had you at hello. Uche and your... So ours was a little different because do you date when you're 17 and 19? I mean, you know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there was a restaurant called Yesterdays, and they would hand out these little $2 bucks, uh -huh. but you didn't have to max out. So if right. you got like $20 worth of these free bucks, right. you could go to dinner. So oh. we had free bucks, and we went to the <laughs> You pulled your bucks? And the Simpsons were on behind my head. Oh. And I remember <laughs> him watching The Simpsons. Wow. He was and, riveted by it. Oh. And 15, 20 years later. He's still watching The Simpsons? If it's something behind my head, he might just look down. I'm just kidding. No! <laughs> What about you? What about you? Uh, we went to a restaurant. Uh, it just opened up here. It's been around forever now, but it's called Michael's. Okay. Uh, and it was kind of like this kind of great old school restaurant. And just loved it. So. We have reservations there tomorrow night. There no you way. go. Tell them I said hi. I will. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, that was fun. That was okay. fun. All right. We're just about done with this special. But if you want more behind the scenes of today, sign up for Today Insider. You'll get a weekly email including early access to steals and deals, giveaways, and oh, so much more. Just go to today.com slash insider. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Come back again. Okay, wow. Wow. Good. Wow. <laughs> Oh.
Over the years, I've been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. We had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Okay. I, you know, I almost got out of this one, please. <laughs> Turn it down. Oh, my God. I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. But I'm hoping to put that all behind me. Today, cookbook author and Southern comfort food extraordinaire, hostess with the mostess, Elizabeth High School, is here to teach me the basics of how to cook. She's gonna be my guide as I attempt to make steak two ways. First, marinated skirt steak with roasted pepper and onions, and then a steakhouse style filet mignon with roasted Brussels sprouts. I've been waiting a long time to use that cast iron pan. Frankly, I've been avoiding it, but no more. So let's get started. Yes! I know, I'm so excited. You are my Obi-Wan to my Luke it. Skywalker. This is it, honey. I promise we're going to make it happen. And I mean, honestly, who does not love a perfectly cooked steak? I love a steak. Everybody does. And I swear, I swear, it's so much easier than you could ever imagine, okay? okay. This is our plan. Marinate the skirt steak, cut and prep the vegetables, grill the skirt steak, sear, baste, and finish the filet mignon, let the meat rest, Cut and serve. All right, so here is our marinade skirt steak. Go ahead and get this out. Do I just go to the butcher and say, I want skirt steak? Exactly. They won't laugh at me. No, let's unfold him. Why do we call it skirt steak? It's just that cut of meat. It goes actually uh, under the abdomen. That oh, is yes, exactly, exactly like, where it, it goes. It like fits you, oh, right, the waist. Now, okay. Yes, if you have a piece of meat that is as big as your waist, yes. you're going to want to cut it. Yes. Okay? So we're going to cut this into four pieces so that we can manage it in our, um, in our skillet. Now, okay? is this one of those against the grain things? Not right now. After we cook it? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay. But right now, I just need you to cut this into cut four pieces. Okay, I got it. Yep, yeah. Nice, long, good. Very, look at you. Oh, I think I'm, look, we get some skills. We're just going to measure out all of our ingredients for our marinade okay. and put them right in the bag. Cheers. I mean, seriously, it's Wednesday. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Only on days that end with Y. <laughs> Those are the only days I drink. Okay, let's go. One quarter cup packed light brown sugar. This I know how to do because of bacon. Now, and remember this. Yes, open this up. This is kind of interesting. So we put a little piece of bread in here. Why? Uh, well, because it's going to keep the brown sugar from getting hard. This is very soft brown I'm sugar. I'm telling you, that's because of the bread. Roll it in there. Let's okay. do our soy. Two tablespoons soy sauce. One tablespoon, One tablespoon of balsamic. Very good. One can chipotle in adobo well, sauce. First, it's tomatoes, onion, garlic is oh. making the sauce. It's earthy, it's smoky, and it's going to add another depth of flavor to this marinade. So let's chop this up. Okay. We want to chop Are it up. Are we chop up all the No, all uh, the No, that would set us all on fire. And so we want it to be, you're good. Okay. Yep. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And then once you kind of get through, mm -hmm. Then you can always go back over it. Yeah, like I would just, my instinct would be to kind of like do this thing. Uh, very nice. Yes, look, that, see, did you just see that? Instinct. Instinct. You're getting it. You're getting okay. it. So because it's a little bit of a tougher piece of meat, mm -hmm. that's why we're going to marinate this. Now okay. listen, you can do this for eight hours. We would love 24 hours. You mean marinating? Exactly. So, I mean, if you ran home and, you know, even if you only had an hour, you know, that's going to be good. So First, we want to pull that. all of this air out of this. Okay. Oh I'm God. sorry. That's one of my favorite parts. I don't know you why do I love you. loving that. I love I you. <laughs> sake, I love you. And so then what we'll do is massage it. Do you feel like this is I do. fully coated? I think coated? you've done an absolutely and beautiful job with that. And then, yes, that is going to go into the fridge to marinate. And so we'll okay. just put it back here. All right. So now we finished our marinade, and we're going to start our roasted vegetables. Okay. And I have got something that is going to change your life when it comes to this. Tell me. So this is, it has all the vegetables that you might want to roast, and then the different times. And you don't have to have a recipe. This is going to be so freeing for you, honestly. So we're going to start with our Brussels sprouts. I'm going to show you, and then you're going to finish. Mm -hmm. So we're going to cut the end off of it, and then we're going to cut it in half, okay. and it's going to go into our bowl. Okay. Okay? What about frozen? Uh, Brussels sprouts. Yeah. Well, th what happens? That's is, how we did in the '70s in my mom's well, kitchen. Well, and that is why we didn't like them. Oh, I hated them. They were just when I was a little kid to put one bite of a Brussels sprout oh, in my mouth there was, was oh god, it was close hell on to earth. torture as you could hell imagine. On earth. If you roast them though, it's a whole new world. And then here we are again. You've got those done. Those All are right. beautiful. Set them over here. And that's what we're going to pair with that filet mignon. Okay. And now we're going to move on to our peppers. And so what I like to do is cut it in half. Go ahead and cut it straight just in like half. Uh-huh. Being very careful to see where you're beautiful. And then I just pull this right out. Oh. 
and then we're going to make nice long slices. You want to keep it even. That's one of the main secrets about roasting vegetables mm -hmm. is that they all need to cook and get finished at the same time. What about these white bits? Like so I those, used to cut those out. And sometimes. you can, you can. I want to show you something. Mm -hmm. So if you will hold your knife here, mm -hmm. it's going to give you a lot more security, mm -hmm. and I think you're going to be more comfortable with it. I like your grip. The grip is better. It's so much better because you have more control. And when you have more control of your knife, you're more comfortable. All right. So now we're going to get to our our onions. Oh, onions. How are we doing it though? Dice? Now, we're going to do just like a rainbow. So just a half moon. So we're going to cut it in half. Okay. Both ends off and then keep going. So what we're going to do, we're going to roast all of our vegetables on separate pans because again, well, that sounds like a pain. Well, it is, but it's really going to make that much of a difference. When you're only using a few ingredients mm -hmm. and salt and pepper, the technique is so important in making this successful. Okay. okay? I would have thrown so I know, the same pan I know you would have. Who cares? And some of them would have burned, and okay. some of them would have been raw, and then you would have been frustrated and said, I don't know how to roast vegetables. Yeah. Okay, so it's technique. Yeah. You're getting very good with your knife, and I'm proud of you. Well, thank you. I'm working on it. But I do have to be reminded about where to hold it, to grip it. It's like a bat when you when you when you choke up on the bat. Or your tennis racket. You know yeah, this. I do. If you held your tennis racket with your finger hanging out like that, you wouldn't be worth a damn. Mm -mm. Okay. I'm so. still not worth a damn. <laughs> <laughs> Just FYI, but you, I take point taken. Point taken. So now I want you to generously olive oil these. Okay, there there we go. Okay. Beautifully coated. Mm -hmm. Good. And that's going to help to ensure that this is going to caramelize. We want it to get that beautiful brown color. Now I see, can't stop. See, I, I know, it's kind of fun, yeah. isn't it? Now we're going to salt it generously. We're going to pepper it generously. Now do I need to like sprinkle, then toss, or just sprinkle, throw it all in there? Sprinkle. Too much? That's, that's a it. lot. That's going to be done. Okay, okay, that's all you need, and then we'll toss it. It kind of helps if you want to you know, go ahead and go in the circle so you're not just dumping it oh, in the middle. Okay. That will kind of help it just okay. a little bit. I would say less pepper than salt, no? And, and that's the great news. It's yours. Okay. So do whatever you want. This recipe is not the boss of you. Yeah. You are the boss of it, okay? Right. Take that recipe. <laughs> I'm not going right, to take it anymore from you. Mix. Now, and also at home, listen, if you don't want to pull out three different sheet pans. I don't own three different sheet well, pans. Well, that's the deal. Okay, I get that. You can always separate it. Okay. So you could do Brussels sprouts here, onions here. So let's okay. throw the onions on one. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay, okay, I just uh -huh. need to share. Okay. Yes. It says don't crowd the pan. Correct. We keep, do not want to crowd it. These want to keep their social distance. Let's mm -hmm. flip these little guys over. Oh. Because the more surface area that's on the bottom of this pan, okay. the more beautiful they're going to be. Mm. All right, and now we have oh, no. one more. Spread that And why out. are we doing three pans again? Because they're all going to cook at different times. Oh, okay. Okay, and if we otherwise, the Brussels sprouts are going to be raw, these are going to be overdone, and yeah. the onions are going to be burnt, and we cannot have that. No. And so now we'll go in the oven with these. Why don't we put peppers and onions on top, and then we will do our sprouts on the bottom. Okay, well that was easy enough. There we go. Now, so what we'll do is we're going to let that cook for a little bit, okay. and then what we want to do is we'll want to rotate the pan. Like just move them around. Exactly. But do I have to flip them? I could get obsessed about flipping each other. You could, over. but you don't need to. Okay. okay. Very nice. That's good. Okay. All right. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now.
Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. All right, so now our vegetables are roasting in the oven. You just gave them a nice toss, so we're going to leave those alone for a minute, and we are going to get ready to cook that beautiful skirt steak. Okay. All right, so we'll go ahead and grab that. It's 24 hours it's been marinating. So now what we're going to do is pull it out. We're going to put it on this paper towel. What will happen when we get ready to cook this? Our amazing. pan is going to be as hot as the hinges of hell. Do you understand me? Okay. And if this marinade is still on here. Like that was droopy. No, you're good. Okay. We're going to pat it. I mean, okay. we're about to get serious with this. Okay. Because it will end up just steaming it and almost boiling it. Oh. And that's not what we want. We want that beautiful caramelized crust. So we are really going to get all the moisture out of it. Okay. So we are going to press on this. We're soaking it up. Now let's come over here. I want you to. Okay, just a question. Is yes. this pan hot? Hot as the hinges of hell, honey. It is hot. Do not touch it. Brush it with um, the canola oil. Okay. And that will help it not stick. When we did that marinade, you have to remember that we added a little bit of sugar. We've also got balsamic that has mm -hmm. sugar in it. It's going to smoke a little bit, okay? okay. Smoking now. It, yes, because it, it's hot. So let's turn our vent on, which is that little button right over there, and that's gonna pull the smoke up. Okay, that vent's over there. How's that gonna help? It will. Okay. All right, let's okay. put that down. Doesn't matter which side? No, just put it down. Very good. So, but this little bit of smoke, it's gonna be so worth it, I promise. Let me get the grandma timer, grandma timer. Grandma, grandma alert. And um, so literally it's just gonna take three minutes on both sides. Okay. Why do we use um, a cast iron pan? Why couldn't I just use a skillet? Oh honey, because cast iron holds the heat. It cooks so evenly. It really is just the absolute best way when you're getting ready to cook a steak. Now so, is it hot? It's hot as the hinges of hell. Just kidding. Oh my gosh, it's You're sticky. Okay. It's, it's broken. No, it's I burned not. It. No, the reason that it's sticky is we had a little bit of sugar in the marinade. But look at that. It's beautiful. Okay. I got to tell you, I would have said that's burnt. No, it's caramelized. That is absolutely gorgeous. Oh I need the jaws of life Calm to down. get this deep thing breath, up. Deep breath, deep breath. You're good. There you are. Oh boy. Oh look boy. Look at those beautiful marks. I You're mean, killing it. Pretty. It smells good, but see, this is where I would have felt like I did it wrong. Absolutely not. Okay. That's what you want. That's that wonderful crisp, right. caramelized. Oh, let's get on there. That's the heaven. I mean, come on. You got it. You got it. There you go. It's a stubborn Excellent. one. Okay, three minutes. That grandma. Beautiful. Three minutes on the other beautiful, side. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yes. I think we're right there. We're about there. Just pull it up. Good. Look excellent, at that. Excellent, it doesn't excellent. matter what size. Look at how beautiful that is. I must say it is. Let's put it over there and let it rest. Okay. Rest for 10 minutes. Be careful, that pan's hot. I know. The pan is hot. Wait, I'm sorry, is the pan hot? <laughs> we turn this off. Now it's not hot. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it what's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now.
Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. All right, let's get these veggies out of the All oven right. before I burn them. Ooh, oh, they look good. I See? think they do. And now we've got our onions mm -hmm. and then our peppers. Should those have been browner or does that look good to you? I think that's nice. Okay. I think that's really good. We're going to use these for fajitas after mm -hmm. we slice that skirt steak up. And then the Brussels sprouts, we'll have this that with our fajitas. beautiful filet. This mignon. is a fajita seed. You are absolutely right. All right, so now we have our vegetables out and we're ready to go with the, the, the filet mignon. Oh. We have two beautiful fillets. They're yes. so cute. Aren't they lovely? There's two beautiful. One, one for, for me, you. one for you. One for me, exactly. Um, so salt and pepper generously. If you don't season it well now, you literally have missed the boat. Sure. You said generous. Generously. Uh-huh. Sides? Absolutely. If you're going to eat the sides, you want it to be seasoned, right? Okay. Just a, there. Good. Very nice. Let's do that on both fillets. And then we'll do the same thing with the pepper. Do you know if I served <laughs> filet mignon to my husband? Oh, he'd lose his mind. I was going to say he'd have a heart attack, not because of the red meat, <laughs> but because I had actually cooked something. I'm telling you. Cooked something. No. He'll just be like, where's and Savannah I love, go? I love how you just did that. That was a oh. pro thing. Woo, that was pro. You know what? I don't like things to go to waste. And there you are. OK, how do you think? Good? It's perfect. Okay. Absolutely great, perfect. Great, great. I want you to go ahead and at least smash your garlic. And let's go ahead and pull our rosemary off. Use the side of this. Hold on. Let's like do this? one clove at a time. Oh. And let's turn the knife away from us. Okay? Oh, okay. Good. And then, but I'm gonna smash and then it. you're going to use Should your Should I hand. cut these tips off before or no? Oh, no. It ain't going to do a damn It ain't going to do anything. Okay. Perfect. Good. Now, is that smashed enough? Well, I mean, I, I would have put a little more effort into it. I mean, that doesn't seem that more it. smashed. Let's do it. Come on. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Very That's nice. That's good, That's but they're still it. big old. Well, if you want to okay. cut it up, you can. Well, it's do. not necessary. It's says smash. Just... I want to be smashed. Okay, smash it. Smash it, smash and it. And not just with the margaritas. And not just with the margaritas. And That's then we... smashed enough, you're saying. You're beautiful. Okay. It's just it's just a quick, easy, okay. you know, it's just a throw in, just okay. a little flavor. Okay. And then we have our rosemary. At least from one sprig, is this the pull off deal? Ah. Uh, you is taught me it, that before. Is it, is is it? it? I think it is. Okay. So we'll start at the top, and then you're going to pull back. Good. And now you can do it. And doesn't that make it so much easier? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, and then just pick off the little ones on the end. Mm -hmm, okay. I oh. enjoy brushing oil. Okay. Now, before we go, we're already starting to smoke. Let's get that vent on, OK? Oh, Let's vent. turn the vent on. Hey. OK. Woo. So should we go for it? We're ready. Let's do it. OK. All right, so here we are. Oh, and hear that? So that's nice. That sizzle was ready. How long does it do? I think it's probably going to take about, you know, two to three minutes. We just want to get that beautiful caramelization. We want to lock in all of those juices. This is about like the crust, basically. Very much so. Should so I be much. doing something with this butter to get ready for this whole scene? Well, I mean, you could go ahead and cut it. You think that's three tablespoons? No, that's not. Like there. Right there. That's right. And I a little that more bacon. isn't going to hurt this. Correct. And just know, Savannah, that smoke is normal. All right. All right. Oh, that's nice. That's very, very good. Isn't that? Nice? And now we want to go side, side, side. Okay, so that's how it should look. I love it. I love it. All right, so now this seems side. like a tricky little thing here. Why? Is You've it three got it. Okay, is it three minutes on each side? Do you want to go ahead and go ahead and do oh, the yes, other one, too? Yeah. Beautiful. Are you just not concerned about my steak, Savannah? As long as yours is what perfect. Okay, yeah. Does so each, let's do a flip. Does each side, like, oh, jeez. Oh boy. You oh can boy. do it. We, mm. Let it go. go. All right. And then your guy goes over. Uh, I swear it is just like Mr. Miyagi and the Karate Kid. <laughs> I'm so proud. It really is. I'm so proud. Look at Elizabeth. Savannah. But I mean, that was beautiful the way you just flipped oh, that. Thank you. You're getting this. There's nothing like low expectations, Elizabeth. <laughs> this is fun. All right. And let's get that, that side right there. Getting this the bottom right. Uh, we're still doing sides, and yeah, then we're side, gonna get, sides. Okay, and I still have this too. One more little side there. Very nice. This one nice. doesn't have another side, interestingly. Okay, so then we have the bottom. <laughs> like some people. Oh. But wait, now should we do the other? This is still a rare side. And should so I do now that? we'll put that one down. Get and on while down. that one's working, mm -hmm. then we're gonna do our little pan sauce. Okay. So we'll add our butter. And I'm just throwing <laughs> it in there. Yeah, throw that in. Fun. 
And then you can kind of hold the pan with the towel, okay? Be very careful. Mm, and yeah. now let's add our garlic and our rosemary. Now look how it looks like it's burning. I'm it's sorry. Not. It's just, okay. it's not. Just it's throw good. this all in. Throw it in. Just sprinkle it around. Very good. And then we have this spoon and we're going to just baste it. Be real careful of that So what's basting? Just pan. spooning it on? Uh -huh. Just fill up a nice big spoon and pour it over. Mm. Oh, look at you. Talk to me. Okay, that's it. Come Keep on. going. Is it already like the leaves and the bits are there? Uh huh. Now is it Very bad that nice. I just moved it? It's perfectly fine. Okay. Look at that. I mean, that looks like uh, that's it. Come to mind. That is a tell. That's it. I need that's it right what now. You're just looking like for. that. Keep basting. Uh huh. And now we're getting ready. One more baste. When we put our thermometer in, you want to be really careful that we go right into the middle of this steak, okay? okay? If you go all the way to the bottom, it's going to give us a false read. It'll be too hot. Oh. So just stick it in. Let's go all the way to the middle. Right now, we're at 74 degrees on okay. this thermometer. I want to go like in the middle. Uh-huh. Are you in the middle? I feel like I am. Okay, good. So this is going to be a team effort. Look at how it's coming up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hold this. You're going to put one hand here and one pan there. Yeah. And then we're going to take it to the oven. Oh, but we didn't check the other one. Do you want me to take this out? No, no, no. It's fine. They're the same size. They're okay. going to cook just about the same. Do you want me to take same. this out now? No. It's going to go into the oven with the thermometer. It's an oven read. Isn't can you that go into the oven? Well, this is going to stay out. That's going to stay in. Whoa. And okay. we're going to do this together. How we... Now Which the oven's have? hot. Go on in. So if you were at home by yourself. Yeah. Yay! You would wait and you would put your you would put your thermometer in now, and then um, you would shut it. And look at it here. Look at there. Wow! Isn't that fun? And then we could even turn on an oven light if we want to look at it in here. So we want to get up to about well 127. Okay. Because once it comes out, the temperature is going to raise a few more degrees. Okay. 130 is going to be a perfect medium rare. Okay. So we'll just sit here and let this. So you come do 127, up. figuring it's going to continue to cook when it's out on the. Correct. It's, How long in the oven is that's it? That's really? why. I mean, it's like what four minutes, yeah. three minutes. So it's quick. Okay. It is quick, and so and that is the thing that's a little unnerving mm -hmm. because it's not hard. It's just fast. You just got to so be ready to roll. Both sides and ready to roll. I mean, seriously, would your husband not die? And you can do this at home. You'd be dead. I'd be. I have to step over his <laughs> dead body. <laughs> He died in shock, and I'm like, excuse me. Well, I made Hold two steaks, but steak. now you died in shock. So I'll have to eat both steaks myself. Or one degree. Okay, there we go, 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 go. Okay, now where do I put it though? All right, we're going to put it back on our induction. Okay? Oh, jeez. It's, it's I okay. would be like, it's dead. Careful. I died Wait, here. Let's focus. Focus. Holy Deep crap. breath, and we're going to focus. Oh, jeez. This is terrifying. Ah! Shoot. That one's on you. Okay. <laughs> where do I put it? <laughs> right there. It looks incredible. Please, would you just look at that? It's absolutely beautiful. Remember that time you burned me with the thermometer? No, I don't. It's a Savannah, hot pan. I don't remember that. So where do I put these? I should take them off yes, the hot pan. Yes, take them off the hot pan. These look delicious. And then let me grab our sprouts, yeah. and we'll scrape them on, and then this one is going to be done. We'll grab our vegetables. Okay. Is it okay that they've just been sitting on those? They haven't like continued to burn or anything. No, not yeah, at not all. Happened. Not at all. We'll just kind of add those to this. Teamwork makes the dream work. That's it. So now let's grab our beautiful skirt steak. Mm. It's been resting. Yeah. So now all of the juices have reabsorbed into the fibers. Let's move this here. We can still use those. Should tongs. I serve it or should no? I put we're going to cut it. Oh, we're going to okay. thinly slice it. And this, without a doubt, is probably one of the most important things. We are going to cut this across the grain. So do you see these long these long fibers that are yes. going this way? Yeah, I guess. All right, so if we were to cut it with those. Yeah, I would have followed then, the line. I mean, if we did this, it is going to be so tough in your mouth, you're not going to be able to chew it. Wow. So then we will cut this way. And you want to kind of do it on the bias. So just a little bit of a um, angle. Okay. Okay. All right. Now I know you can do this. There is very no, okay, nice. Yoda. Very nice. There is no try. There is only do. But says look, Yoda. and there you are. I do. I mean, figure that out. Like, this is just have, wonderful. Like, isn't that funny that like someone figured out at some point that we need to go across the yeah. grain, and now you know what they're talking so this about. This is this, and now I'll go like this. Perfect. Right? Across the grain, and that is going to make sure that every single bite is so tender and so delicious and so flavorful. Mm -hmm. You're not even going to believe it. 
taking all of my self-control not to just start eating this. <laughs> Always remember though, Savannah, that since you're the chef, mm -hmm. you get to have the chef special. That's right. You know, which is just like one little piece, like before oh. it goes. Well, and oh. This you got to make sure it's amazing, you know? Test. Okay, let me finish this and I'm going to do oh, it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm making you do all the work and I'm just like, I'm enjoying oh, myself. Oh, I love it. Oh. Is incredible. it really good? Mm -hmm. It's absolutely delicious. I hate these last little bits. It's where I, that's where it's like the risk of mm -hmm. blood is high. Okay, I'm going to take a little chef's special. But because we did that marinade, the well, caramelization, you know, it's got that little bit of crunch, that beautiful real nice. depth of flavor, that little bit of sweetness. Mm. So let's add it to our tray okay. here. Tongs? What? Yeah, let's I'm do fine. tongs. Tongs are going to be perfect. Best steak I ever made. Only steak I ever made, but. Is still. it really? Mm -hmm. You should be very, very proud of yourself. Is, I mean, is this it? Is it dinner this shirt? This is it, honey. I mean, we can go ahead and take this over to the table. Okay, yay. And I'll grab these beautiful steaks. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. What do you see right now with Putin, and do you think he's a rational actor? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? The sanctions did not deter. Can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. I can't believe it. Yeah. It doesn't get any better. Oh Absolutely gosh. does oh. not get any better. It looks incredible. And the margarita. But so see, you could serve this with the flour tortillas yeah. and the pico de gallo and cheese, or you could do that with the mashed potatoes and maybe some roasted carrots. Whatever your kids love, now you know how to roast every vegetable that there is. This is the first time I've made a steak and the first time I've roasted a vegetable. Cheers! Not my first margarita. <laughs> no. We Let's are, do this. We're good at this. Mm -hmm. This is so fun. Okay, so what do we do? Let's do a little bit oh, yeah. of this. Come to mama. And then here we are mm -hmm. with those and beautiful roasted vegetables know, that you I love did. It. You know, it's that moment right before you cut into your steak that you kind of take that breath wondering, you know, was it yeah. was it cooked properly? Well, that's what is I Is it just like I like look uh, it It's so oh. tender. Oh my gosh. <laughs> This is my Christmas card. That's it. That should be absolutely. I mean, this like, looks incredible. That doesn't get okay, any let's better. Taste it. Delicious. I I'm not say. I'm sorry. Mm. You killed it. So absolutely good. killed it. It's so tender. Let me try these Brussels. And I love. Mm. Not mom's frozen. The aromatic of just that little bit of garlic and rosemary that we threw in at the last minute was beautiful. It is really delicious. Okay, now I gotta try skirt steak. Tender, not chewy, because mm -hmm. we cut it across the grain. And that's the key. The I neighbor. might have added a little more salt. And that's fine. Lesson learned. So now you know. We've opened up so many possibilities to you, because you saw two ways to make a steak, one with a marinade, one without, and then we know exactly how to roast vegetables. So you've got everything from roasting an onion and peppers, if you wanted to make fajitas, all the way to beautiful Brussels sprouts or butternut squash. I mean, it's unbelievable what you can do now. I know, it's uh, so could you, are you saying that like other cuts of steak I could prepare in the same way? Absolutely, so it doesn't matter whether it's a ribeye, or if you are doing a filet like we did today, it's the same method. It just depends on the cut of the meat. You're either going to marinate it and have to be very careful with the way you cook it, or you're going to go sear it on all sides and go in the oven to finish. Just so you've done it. Now I can make anything. You really can. Just, any just, sort of protein and vegetable. I just have one final question. 
What is that? Is the pan hot? <laughs> Honey, that pan is hotter than the hinges of hell. <laughs> How about the streak? It's cold as ice. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Hey there, and welcome to On The Money Today. I'm Stephanie Rule, and I am here to help you figure out one of my favorite topics, relationships and money. Two things that usually do not go together, at least you don't think they do. Money, it's often an afterthought in our relationships, but it shouldn't be. It is a huge part of our lives, from merging our finances with our partner to helping our moms and dads figure out their retirements and even just figuring out where you and your friends are going for lunch and who's going to pay for it. There is money in all of these issues. And I am here today, along with a few of my smartest friends, to help make you get better and smarter, and dare I say, maybe even put a little spark back into your relationship. But before we dive in, I wanna go through my money rules to live by when it comes to love and money. First, you have got to make a plan. Before you head into these difficult conversations with your loved ones, spend a few minutes thinking about what points are most important for you to get across. I know it is really scary to talk about, so you wanna set yourself up for success for these conversations. Have your list ready and you'll be ready to go. Next, try to keep a level head. Money is emotional. If you need to take a break from one of these conversations, please do it. Remember, you've already got the game plan. That is great. If you need to step away, if you need to, Take a deep breath, come back to the conversation where everybody has some time to process. And lastly, you've got to respect your loved one's boundaries as well as your own. We all have very different needs and boundaries. What you might think is a total deal breaker, your spouse, they might not think about it twice. There's also cultural differences. There's age differences to consider. Part of respecting boundaries is knowing where yours are and where your partners are. Flexibility is so important but you also shouldn't sacrifice your wants and needs just to avoid a conflict. We don't want to fight, we want a resolution. Now, people often say that money talks, but what I want to know is, are you talking about money? And if not, we're going to. So we talked to three couples about how they approach financial conversations, and they told us what causes them the most stress and how they work together to get their financial goals met, or at least organized. Take a look. Who in your relationship was the first to bring up money? I'm Michael. I'm Matt. Um, and we've been together seven and a half years, married for three and a half. We met through, I posted my coming out video on YouTube. What I'm trying to get at is I'm gay and I've been struggling with my sexuality for the last 10 years of my life. And Michael posted a video response one year later, and I actually moved to Nebraska from Seattle two months into our relationship. So it was almost kind of like a necessity to figure out how we were going to make our finances work in order for us to be together. Hi, I'm Natasha Peterson. I'm Jeremy Peterson, your husband. And we have been married for seven years, and we have three little boys. I grew up in a house where debt was seen as normal. Before we had gotten married, I had talked to him about the student loans that I had and also the credit card debt. I just I just emphasize on the whole thing like since we're married, your debt is my debt. Hi, my name is Teresa Leon. I'm Zach and we've been dating for eight years now. We run a business together. He works full time on the business. I'm an accountant full time. Who's more likely to start a conversation about finances now? I disagree with how we handle money. I think I keep maybe a closer eye on it, and he just sort of is like, don't talk to me about money unless you have to. Because this is our first year living together, we don't really have a budget yet. We just kind of spend on what we need to. We like to have like meetings and you know talk to each other about how to effectively budget. Who's more likely to splurge on something they don't need? He has an Amazon problem, I have a Starbucks problem, so. We spend most of our money on food and honestly, putting money back into our business. Who gets more stressed about money-related topics? I think our biggest struggle right now is we have money coming in, but it's not consistent. And sometimes it all hits all at once, and then sometimes there's nothing at all. We want to make sure that we enjoy life while we pay off debt. Hey, maybe we won't eat out three or four times a week. Maybe it'll just be once a week. Who loves crunching the numbers? I knew when I met Michael that I'm a penny pincher. He's much more knowledgeable than me with money. I'm always calculating. 
So we like to use colorful pencils, graphic templates. I handle most of the finances. I keep in running Excel sheet of like our expenses. Who is better at budgeting? One of our financial goals. Debt free. Uh, yes. Also, we really want to look into investing so we can create generational wealth for our children too. Well, right now we're trying to save money for a surrogacy journey. We want to be able to go to Thailand tomorrow if you want to and work from there. And I think that's what we're chasing. All right, that's how they're doing it. Let's figure out how you're going to do it. Here to help us break down how to talk to your partner about money is CNET Money Editor at Large and author of When She Makes More, Farnoosh Tarabi. Farnoosh, I am so glad you're here. How do we start these conversations? It's not easy. It's not, Stephanie. And you know, I'm gonna be very honest. No matter how great you think you're at money, this is always an uncomfortable topic when you becomes two and you're in a relationship. My advice is to not talk about money at first, believe it or not. Talk about your goals, talk about your ambitions, talk about what you share in common because you wanna to come to this conversation on, on a level playing field and feeling as though you both have a commitment to something greater than you know what's in your wallet. And I think you wanna to come to this conversation with enthusiasm and a look ahead. And I think talking about goals can bring forth this sense of togetherness that is gonna be so vital when you then venture into a conversation about money. I love your optimism. In my house, enthusiasm often translates into a fight. How do you avoid that? Well, I have found that, um, you know, savers often attract spenders. And a lot of the fights are around our financial differences. The good news is we're all very different. Opposites attract. The science has proven this. Savers do attract spenders. It's romantic in the beginning, maybe, but it can spell disaster if you don't get a handle on it. So to get a handle on it, to avoid these fights, I have to say the number one tactic is to create three different bank accounts, ours, yours, and mine. This is a, a huge help for couples who want to contain their financial autonomy and their independence. Think about it. We're often coming to relationships with our own history with money and our own uh, habits. And so you come into a relationship and if it's just one bank account, it can feel very, very restricting. So within that one bank account, it's now the responsibility of the partners to determine what are the shared expenses that we want to have. And even if we have disparate incomes, we're going to take equal percentages of each of our salaries or incomes and pull them into this joint account. And that's going to then pay for things like rent and food, whatever we're deciding we're going to share in. What remains remains in each person's individual accounts so that if you want to get a haircut, if you want to buy the next iPhone, you can do so without it turning into a conversation that can be stressful. And then you feel like you're getting financially policed by your partner. This is a very important tactic. I don't want to get financially policed, but we hear from people all the time that feel like they're the chump. They make more, so there's so much more expectation on what they should pay for. How do you create a balance of power? Or if you're the person who earns less, how do you put yourself in a position where you don't feel like you're working for your partner? So many strategies here. So number one is you cannot equate money with power. I know that's commonplace in business. We live in a capitalist world. We tend to associate money with power but not in a relationship. I really urge uh, couples to think about um, money as a tool in your relationship. And whether you're making more or less, it's our money. I, I've obviously written a book about it. And what I hear often from partners that make less, they say that, you know, I feel less than. We often associate how much we make with our sense of self-worth. You have to dismantle this. This is a mindset shift. Um, and then beyond that, it's really about thinking, okay, how can we level the financial playing field? How can the top earner and the person making less or nothing still feel like they're equal financial contributors? And that comes down to understanding what your roles can be in the financial mechanics of the relationship. So earning is just one aspect of the financial mechanics. There's also budgeting and saving. We had some of the um, people in the profiles you just featured where one person was handling the Excel spreadsheet. I mean, there are things that people can be doing in the relationship, even if they make less or zero, to contribute significantly to the, um, the overall you know, running of the financial life that they have together. In a relationship, in an equal partnership, there is no boss, there is no employee. It's your partner. Farnoosh, always good to see you. Thank you for making us smarter on a really difficult topic. 
Coming up next, a topic that more and more people are talking about these days, financial infidelity, a startling trend that is on the rise, how to spot it and how to stop it when we return. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to On The Money. Financial infidelity, or lying to your partner about money, it's on the rise. According to a recent survey from creditcards.com, almost half of respondents said financial infidelity is just as bad as physically cheating on a spouse. And 32% of Americans living with a partner or a spouse have committed some form of financial infidelity. It might be easy to think that it would never happen to you, but it's more common than you think. My husband and I were married for um, 15 years when he passed away, which was in um, June 2021. And um, for our entire marriage, he handled all of our finances. And after he passed away, I realized that, I quickly realized that our financial situation wasn't the way that he portrayed it to be. He had um, open credit cards in my name without my permission, without my knowledge. He hadn't filed um, any of our taxes, our business or personal taxes for from 2013. He had been lending money to friends without being repaid. He had been giving money to his adult children out of our account. He had been spending a lot of money on just his sports and his hobbies that, uh, that I wasn't aware of. When I first found out about the financial infidelity issues, I was initially angry. I was confused. The feelings were mixed in with trying to grieve the loss of my husband, who I loved and who was my best friend. The hardest part about this situation, initially, it was just the day-to-day, -day, how am I going to pay for groceries? How am I going to get back on track? Um, am I going to be able to stay in my house? Just the actual financial decisions. And then it turned, the hardest part turned into just the feeling of somebody that I knew, that I loved, that I trusted that I realized maybe he wasn't the person that I thought he was when it came to this one area of my life. There's not one bit of me that thinks that he did anything maliciously or trying to harm me or trying to steal from me. I think he made really poor financial decisions. But when it comes to finances, um, you need to take care of yourself. Having a great marriage and having a partner doesn't necessarily mean that that person um, knows how to handle money and, um, and, and just know what's going on. You don't necessarily have to handle it all yourself, but at least know what's going on. When I do get to the point where I'm ready to start dating or, or to be in a relationship, I will make sure that my new partner and I are financially compatible. Now, Shana's case is an extreme example of financial infidelity, but she's not alone. Megan McCoy is a certified financial therapist and the director of Masters of Financial Planning at Kansas State University. She's got some advice on why this happens and how to catch the warning signs and, of course, how to protect yourself. How often is this financial infidelity happening in relationships? I mean, Shana's devastating experience, I feel like that's one in a zillion, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's happening all the time. 
Yeah, you know, the stats around how often it happens is all over the place. Because if you ask people, did you commit financial infidelity? Often they say no. But if you say, did you ever round down about how much you spent to the mall or maybe pretended something was used or just didn't want to bring up something you bought, all of a sudden the numbers skyrocket. So in, if you think about financial infidelity in this broad way, it's very, very common. Why? Why do people do it? They just want to smooth out the edges and not have difficult conversation. That's a slippery slope. Yes, absolutely. Like you're describing, sometimes you just get in a bad financial situation, and so you just avoid the conversation. Other times it's linked to infidelity, uh, addiction. It can be due to having shame about what you're buying. It could even be just um, a lack of ability to be assertive with your partner and not being able to tell them what you need. The problem, though, for so many of us, our partner's decisions become our liabilities. So if you're concerned that your partner is making harmful financial decisions, even if they're not malicious, what are some of the signs? Yeah, some of the signs are secrecy, hiding things, distance, even like hiding the mail, like taking in the mail or changing mm. the past accounts. Those are all little signs that they're keeping a secret from you. So let's say you know it's happening. What can we do to protect ourselves, especially if we're married? Yes. Number one, I am what I called a reform money avoidant. I hated thinking about money. I like to give all that responsibility to other people in my life. And what I always urge people is once you get over that hump of trying to get used to money, it gets easier and easier. So the more you are trying to engage yourself around what is my accounts, how do I log in, is there an app I can get to track things, and even getting your credit report because uh, recently due to COVID, we now get our credit report for free six times a year. So that's an easy way to just check Every couple of months, make sure everything is in accordance with how you think it's going. We need to step into our power. That is our money. We need to know where it is and how it's being spent. Thank you so much for joining us, Megan. I appreciate it. Coming up next, how to have the talk, not with your spouse, but with your parents and your siblings. A really hard conversation. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. In the city of Angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. What do you see right now with Putin? And do you think he's a rational actor? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? The sanctions did not deter. Can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Millennials, it is time to have the talk. Not with your kids, not with your partner, maybe the most difficult conversation with your parents. Some common retirement advice is, it's never too early to start planning, but what happens when you find out that it is too late and your parents' retirement plan is you? Erin Lowry is a personal finance expert and author of The Broke Millennial Talks Money. She's got some great ideas on how to alleviate some of this stress. And yes, it begins 
with talking to your mom and dad. Aaron, welcome. How do you start this conversation? It's a lot harder than talking to our spouses. For a lot of our parents, they're defensive. They've got a lot of pride. It wasn't that long ago they were giving us our allowances. That's absolutely true, which is why you should think about the fact that parents, and I'm not trying to call you out parents, they love to give advice. And that is one easy way to set up this conversation. So if it's something that feels genuine and authentic, as in you know that your parents have made some good financial decisions, you can ask simple questions like, you know, I'm, I got my first 401k, I'm trying to set it up. What did you do to set up for your retirement? Trying to get those context clues. But if that doesn't feel totally right to you and definitely inauthentic, another option, just to ask a simple question. You know, oh, my friend Jackie, her parents just retired and moved down to Tennessee. I'm curious, what were you guys envisioning for your retirement? And keep it open-ended, see what they say. All right, so let's say they do share their situation and they have no plan for their retirement. Their retirement plan is you. How do you start to manage that? And what do you do with your siblings? Well, the first thing to think about is that this could have been a decision because they were doing what they thought was in the best interest of you. I do genuinely believe parents do the best that they can with the information that they have. And perhaps you going to college and your siblings going to college is how they spent their retirement money. And of course, that can be a stressful burden. So the first thing is definitely get your siblings involved if you have them. Have a conversation about what have mom and dad told you? What do you feel that you can contribute to? If your parents are looking to you guys to be the retirement plan, then you need to think about what your skill sets are that you can bring to the table. Financially, can some of you provide that support? Maybe some of you are providing the research support or looking into programs or options looking at potential social security benefits they might be receiving, and is that enough? Could they move in with any of you? Starting to make that plan now, early, is a critical part of this conversation. And maybe how setting you, up an emergency how, fund. How do you have these conversations? Do you have them with everyone at the table? Do you have them just with your parents? Do you have them just with your siblings? It's very difficult because you and your siblings may all be living in different places and in very different financial situations. The how to have it at the start, I don't think it should feel like a gang up. Having all of the siblings together and ha initiating that conversation could feel really overwhelming to your parents. So I would start one at a time instead of everybody all together. But eventually it will reach a point where you should all be sitting down together, regardless of whether or not your parents have planned. Even if your parents have meticulously planned, there should at some point be a family meeting where information is shared with everyone at the same time. Okay, let's say they have meticulously planned. They have saved for retirement. Does that mean your involvement is done and you're off the hook? No, it doesn't mean that your involvement is done. You do need to know this information, particularly if just one of your parents tends to be in charge of, you know, the, the chief financial officer of the household. You want to know where all the information is. You know, I had somebody share with me recently that she has a document on her computer that says open upon death that has all of the relevant information that her husband or her children would need, which is a beautiful thing to be doing. It's a beautiful thing to be doing. When you say it like that, it feels a bit morose, but that is information we absolutely need. Erin, thank you so, so much. Uh, a really important conversation. When we come back, I have a question. Are you up for a challenge? Well, last month we tracked our spending. We're gonna find out what we're about to do next. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts.
We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to On The Money. You know I love a challenge, and I hope you do too. I encourage you to get up close and personal with your finances. You know, last month we asked you to track your spending. Now I want you to take it a step further. Choose a loved one, your partner, your kid, a friend, and set up a financial goal you're both excited about. It can be big or small, like paying down debt, saving for a trip, or just treating yourselves to a nice dinner. Make a plan to reach that goal together. If you and the kiddo, let's say, bring your lunches to work and school for a week instead of buying, well, you can set that money aside for a fun day together. Now, if you're uncomfortable about talking about money with loved ones, this might be a stretch for you. But just getting started, reaching a financial goal, even a small one, is going to get you one step closer to talking about money at home, and it's an important step you need to take. You want to keep track of those wins, and that'll be easier when you have the hard conversations. I'll be checking in with you on Instagram and today's show in a couple of weeks to see how it went. But before we go, let's talk about other issues we are all facing when it comes to money. Tax season, it is in full swing, and there is no time like the president, you better get on it, to get a head start on filing your return. We know this year tax season is gonna be unlike any other. The IRS is still processing millions of returns from last year, and the deadline is April 18th, not the 15th, and we're not expecting the IRS to be pushing it back again this year. So the sooner you file, the sooner you're gonna get that refund. So here's my tips to actually make it happen and make sure it goes smoothly. First, gather your documents. That's your W-2s, your 1099s. If you're a freelancer, your bank account information, and any receipts from medical procedures or charitable donations before you sit down to actually file. You want to take 15 minutes to make sure you have all of your paperwork in place. You don't want to get started and then be searching for documents. Next, consider what changes or deductions might be relevant for you specifically in the last year. Remember, stimulus payments went out in March of 2021. If you think you were owed one or maybe the child tax credit and didn't get it, you can claim it on your taxes and potentially get it in your refund. That's a good thing. Next, do not forget that the fastest way to get your refund is to file online and use direct deposit rather than a physical check. You can choose that option. If you can do it, please do. It is more efficient. You want to get that money. And finally, Try, I know this sounds crazy, but just try to have a little fun if you can. Put your favorite trashy TV show on in the background, put on some good music, call a friend, maybe order your favorite meal that you know is going to be coming in a couple of hours. Get through that hard day, maybe do your taxes at the same time your friend is. There's no reason why filing your taxes can't be, I don't know, as much fun as possible. Try to give it a pretty good goal. Don't get too overwhelmed. Take a deep breath. If you really need help, you can call an accountant. But you've got to get started if you're going to get finished. And you've got to get those taxes done. Thank you so much for joining us for today's edition of On The Money. And anything you need to know about money and relationships, check us out. Go to today.com slash on the money. Love and money, wouldn't it be great if they work together well? Well, we're going to make it that way. I'm Stephanie Rule, and I'll see you next time. Welcome to Today All Day. All day? Today all day. All day. This is a long oh, way of asking man, yeah, who's your okay. favorite character you've ever oh, played. The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things. Yeah, you gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. Yeah. I don't want the wrath of Luna. <laughs> when I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold cut. My buddy Cal cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today with simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit <laughs> now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do a weather out. <laughs> okay. All you gotta do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Wow.
Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't look, look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Okay. Will you judge okay. us in a cook-off? I yeah. will, and okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. What are you looking forward to the most when life really gets back to normal? I'm looking forward to going to restaurants and <laughs> museums and just kind of like spending a day wandering around, interacting with just that, all that stuff that we've just missed. You know, like nothing even so crazy, just, just kind of like getting back out into the world and, and experiencing s sensory things. <laughs> Seeing humans, <laughs> making eye contact. <laughs> yeah, I know. exactly. It's an adjustment. You actually had COVID early on. Yeah. How do you feel now? I know you had some long haul symptoms. Are you feeling better? Yeah, I, I feel better. I, I, sometimes it, they come back a little bit, but I think it, I'm better and better. It's, it, it was pretty, it's been pretty crazy though. It's been pretty wild. I'm not gonna lie. You famously, um, I guess kind of famously, you and your hubby <laughs> got married but didn't move in together right away. Then you mm -hmm. moved in together and the pandemic struck. So you yeah. went from kind of having your own space to having <laughs> zero space and 24-7, 365. How was that? It was amazing. <laughs> I, I married the right dude like he is the best and i there is like nobody to nobody better to be stuck with so i'm but i am glad we moved in together before the pandemic hit yeah it's like from zero to 100 but thank goodness that you're i mean it could have gone in a different direction like that it's affirming that yeah. you're 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 actually like okay this you're the right person that's a good point that's a good point no you're definitely right <laughs> How has it been home with your kids? Because you've got, he's got two teenagers, you've got two teenagers. It's been the best. I mean, I, it's like, you know, there are some really significant, profound silver linings from this crazy 12 months. And that time with the kids has been definitely on the top of the list. And, you know, we were just saying last night how it was amazing to, you know, with teenagers, they're usually having dinner. Like, we always eat all together, but then it's like they're rushing off to do X, Y, and Z. And for the last 12 months, we've all just had these long, lingering, wonderful conversations at meals and, you know, visits where, you know, my daughter will just come in and kind of lay on the couch and kind of catch up. And, you know, that to me has been the most precious gift of this whole time. I mean, it's a dream. You, your yeah. teenagers, I mean, when I was a teenager, I found my parents to be deeply embarrassing <laughs> and uncool. But mm -hmm. your kids are lucky. They have two, two cool parents. Like, do they see it that way? Mm, no, no. <laughs> my, daughter, my daughter thinks we're totally embarrassing. My daughter, like, makes fun of us all the time. And she always has. It's pretty funny. I think my son thinks we're, we're pretty cool, maybe. But he's, he just turned 15, so maybe he'll start to get a different opinion soon. He might, he might turn into the skeptical, dark teenager. <laughs> yes. It happens. Well, you have, um, Goop is just going great. You continue to be a mogul. You've got a new skincare <laughs> line. You mm -hmm. have um, a gadget that shan't be mentioned <laughs> that's sold out. Mm-hmm. Can you believe, are you, are you ever still surprised at, that this has just taken off the way it has? Yeah, you know, it's so funny because when you work so hard at something for so many years and it feels like it's almost growing in increments that you can barely notice. So I think it's so important sometimes to stop and be like, wow, we actually got somewhere. Like 
we're a brand that means something to people and we're so proud of the things that we make and, and what we put into the world and like people are actually reading it and coming to the site. So I've been trying actually to stop and take stock a little bit more and appreciate a little bit more lately what we've been able to build. You've got this new skincare line. Apple, your daughter, is actually a big part of the launch. How did that come about? Well, this, um, so we have a couple of different lines. One is the Goop Glow line. So it's, it's all about like super healthy, glowy skin and how you get it from the inside out and amazing ingestible product and topical product. And we were doing this moisturizer, this light glow moisturizer. And beca partly because she, she's very into makeup and skincare and, um, she loves the glow line. And so, um, she was like, I, you know, I, I, you guys should make a light moisturizer that has like, gives you like a little bit of a glow. So she was sort of part of the product development process. And so that when it came out, I was like, oh my gosh, should I let her be in the picture or not? Cause she wanted to be in the picture. So we, we decided to let her, but it's nice. It's nice when it feels like your family's contributing to what you're doing and the things that you're making and to have that kind of support. And like my mom, was a model for me last summer with our Goop Jeans line. Um, and, and so it's so nice to have like these two generations of women who love you being supportive. It's so sweet. Well, I love her TikTok video. First, my mom drinks her Goop Glow Super Powder and she eats nothing except for dates and almond butter. She's basically <laughs> trolling you. That's what she does all the time. That's what I was telling you. <laughs> Constantly. She's um, she's saying my mom is always, she's been on a cleanse since I was born, and she's always <laughs> drinking a smoothie and making candles, and she's um, even teasing you about Goop's focus on a certain female body part. Yep, yep, that's right. I get it all day long. I mean, she is so funny. It's funny, one of my best friends from growing up, a guy named Tony Liness, he was like, because my father was really funny, and he always says she is the non-recessive Paltrow humor gene. <laughs> she is really, like, she's, um, she's sassy. She's super sassy. Oh, yeah, big time. She's powerful, and she's articulate and funny, and I love that kind of dry, sassy sense of humor. Do you think she'll go into the family business? At this point, what is the family which one? business? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which one? I don't know. She's very, you know, it depends day to day. She's really interested in a lot of things. She's really interested in history and political science and law. And, you know, she's, and she loves the art. She's amazing draw. You know, so I don't know. Like, she... I think both of my kids are sort of like, we don't want to think about what we want to do. We just kind of want to see what unfolds. And, you know, because I think as parents, we're like, wow, I wonder what direction they're going to go in. But they have time. <laughs> we don't have to push yeah, it. They do. Yeah. It's true. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. What do you see right now with Putin, and do you think he's a rational actor? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? The sanctions did not deter. Can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. I was listening to a podcast you did, and I thought it was so interesting you talked about your dad and you talked about your upbringing mm. 
And even though you had two famous, successful parents and you had a lot of opportunity, it was so interesting to me. You talked about how your dad kind of said, once you're out on your own, you're on your own. You know, you, you, you mm -hmm. can make, you can go for it in acting, you can go for it in Hollywood, but it's on you. I mean, do you, yeah. that, I thought that was really cool and interesting, but also hard yeah. to do as a parent. Like, do you feel you could pull that yeah. off now? You know, I think that was one of the most valuable things he gave me was saying, you know, look, you're growing up in a privileged environment, but this is my money. This is not yours. And when you leave home, we're done. Like, I'm never giving you a penny. <laughs> and he stuck to it. Like, it was, it was a great lesson. And I had to learn how to completely fend for myself. And I thought that he would offer a safety net, and he didn't. Wow. So um, it was it was a wonderful way to understand what I was made of and what I was capable of. Um, and, you know, it knocked any part of me that had a, the spoiled part of my upbringing, like knocked it right out. Um, and, and I really admire him for sticking to it. Because as you say, like, that would really, that would pull at my, at my heartstrings. But he, he stuck to it. Do you feel like that's something you'll be able to do or do you want to do? I think about this all the time with my own kids. You know, I think it's really important that children learn to create a life that they are in charge of and to have that agency. And so I always encourage them. You know, it's, it's both of my kids, like my daughter had a retail, has had two retail jobs. Like she, I think just from, witnessing me work and respecting that and and the freedom of you know that it gives her you know to buy the crop top that she wants to buy and um i think it's one of the most important things that we can do to our children is instill that work ethic you are also in the midst of the goop lab season two mm -hmm. i'm a big viewer are you thank you are you doing anything adventurous this time around? Um, this this season is different. It's kind of a different, um, like the content, it's, the setup is a bit different. So I, I'm, not, I'm not doing anything too daring. I, I actually had an idea for the show where I wanted to, so I'm trying to convince Netflix for next time. Like I have an idea that might, might be too, a little too daring, but um, it's been so incredible to film it. And I'm so excited for this version they never let you talk about you know what it is but it's going to be really good wait so do i get to hear the daring idea the pitch mm, i don't think so but <laughs> if if they if they agree to it then i'll tell you first how's that <laughs> i'll take it i actually <laughs> want to do one of these episodes with you i want to go do one of these crazy like ice baths or i don't know okay i'm I, okay well, you'll come be my partner in one of them next time yeah unless it's jumping out of a plane or something, then I'm too... Okay, yeah. I don't want to do that either. Okay, good, we agree. i sort of been circling around it because I don't think there's a way to talk about it on morning television, but you do mm -hmm. have some products mm -hmm. that keep selling out. Mm-hmm. And um, are you surprised? <laughs> <laughs> you know... No, I, in a way, I'm I'm not surprised. Look, I think that our sexuality is such an important part of who we are, and you know, even the fact, like, if you think about it, we're on morning television, so we can't talk about female pleasure. Just I just bleeped you, that out. I just bleeped it out. <laughs> but you know, it sort of gives you an insight into how culturally we're still it's still taboo, and one of the things we really believe in at Goop is kind of eliminating shame from these topics. Have you done anything that where you've like, in this space where you've kind of shocked yourself or surprised yourself that you're talking about it, whether it's the candle or the gadget? Right. Um, I think it's all sort of part of this thing of like bringing, bringing female sexuality into the culture and, and, and talking about it in a way that kind of demystifies and destigmatizes it. And so I actually think it's great when people are a bit surprised or you know by some of the product. And you know the, it's funny because the candle was a complete accident. 
and because um, it just started as a joke and then it became a product but it's it's come to to be a talisman you know t for me of like this really important moment to kind of embrace um, all aspects of ourselves and not not feel that kind of shame is your mother ever like Gwyneth I can't Always. believe <laughs> Always. Because Ms. Blythe Danner is very elegant and very, very proper, it seems to me. She is. But, you know, even proper ladies I th have sexuality, too. This is part of your legacy now, you know? <laughs> like Good. Really? Okay, so if it's in, like, the first paragraph of your obituary, Gwyneth Paltrow, Oscar winner, and, you know, and the candle. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Hopefully it'll all be, you know, I'll be an amalgam of many things, as all women are. What about acting? Because you did The Politician. You mm -hmm. did, I know you are totally consumed with your company. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But do you still want to pursue acting? Are we going to see you on screen again soon? Well, you'll see me on screen in the Goop Lab. Yeah. For sure. And, you know, I, it's, just, it's not really my focus right now. I think if you do see me on screen, it would probably be, you know, something that my husband was doing. Otherwise, I got to focus on my day job. I know. He's the only one who lured you back to Hollywood. That's right. <laughs> you are kind of a lightning rod. We always talk mm -hmm. about this. Yeah, yeah. Why? You know, I don't, I, th I think I know, but I'm, I don't even know that it's, I feel like it's my job to not engage in the, in the opinions about me, good or bad, positive, negative over time. It's like, I'm really focused on, you know, what I'm doing. And I think it's actually like, especially at Goop, what we're putting into the world is actually really important and moving culture forward. And if I started to get upset about people's responses to whatever, you know, it might pull me back from that. So I try just not to pay too much attention and really stay in my integrity and move forward. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? the city of angels two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever and so they did listen to the thing about helen and olga the new podcast from dateline and keith morrison these days the news never stops the morning's headlines change by afternoon and by the end of the day it's all totally different so let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For more than two decades, Gwyneth Paltrow has graced covers, grabbed headlines, and garnered every imaginable accolade, one of Hollywood's perennial A-listers. But these days, this is Gwyneth's proudest accomplishment. Goop, the lifestyle and wellness brand she launched 10 years ago in her kitchen, has grown into a $250 million juggernaut. 
its customers loyal and passionate, and on a Saturday, happy to spend $1,000 to gobble up Gwyneth's wisdom. Did you ever think that Goop would become what it's become? <laughs> I think I had a, a secret dream that it would become what it's become, but um, when I started 10 years ago, I, I had absolutely no idea. I had just had a, a vision, but I had no idea how to, how to get there, like how to execute on it. Did you know there was an inner CEO in you? <laughs> <laughs> I was always very interested in business. I was always fascinated by it, but I, I didn't think that I had kind of the license to go into business. Sometimes it's written in the press that you stopped acting. Right. Is, well, is they, are they getting that right? <laughs> is it is, is you stopped acting? Is you pausing from acting? I, You're uncoupling from acting. <laughs> <laughs> I've never said that I am quitting acting. What I say is, um, Goop is my full-time passion, and being the founder and CEO of Goop is what I do all day, every day. Um, and occasionally, when something is the right thing and it works out around my children and my Goop life, I'm able to participate. I think I'm just not focused on full-time acting right now. Everyone says you're extremely involved. <laughs> this is not a vanity project where you just oh, no. slap your name on something. Oh, no, no, I, I, I wish at this point. <laughs> what kind of boss would you say you are? Um, I think that I am a, an optimistic boss. I think I am constantly hoping for the highest good for all. Over time, I've had to learn the more difficult qualities of being a boss. It's been interesting as a woman to have to implement more structure and boundaries um, and, you know, giving difficult feedback. Like, that's been, a, that's been a hard part of it for me. What have you learned about yourself in this journey, this particular journey of going into business? I've had to sort of constantly shed my ego along the way because I had to come to terms with how much I didn't know, how much I had to learn. I, I made so many mistakes on the way to learning what I've learned. Goop has sometimes faced criticism, even lawsuits, accusing it of promoting unproven health claims, what some called pseudoscience. Growing Pains Paltrow says she has learned from. But her vision has also been vindicated. Hello. The wellness concept she was among the first to popularize now makes up a $4.2 trillion industry. And we've always said, like, we're just asking questions. And I also really love when we write about something or talk about something at Goop and, you know, the internet goes crazy and then six months later, 12 months later, two years later, you see it kind of being widely adopted into the culture. Well, that has happened a few times. Yes, it has. You it could has. say, I told you so. <laughs> but I would never. <laughs> Gwyneth is well aware of the way some people see her as someone just a bit too perfect. And she's willing to poke fun at herself, like on SNL this weekend. Piper, I, I need your help because I'm really afraid that Gwyneth's going to fire me. <laughs> No, she, she doesn't believe in firing, remember? It's called conscious unemploying. <laughs> right. Well, first of all, for the record, are you perfect? Oh my God. Are you insane? <laughs> exactly. I'm a mess. <laughs> Everyone is, but for people to kind of say, is she trying to say she's so perfect and the rest of us are just a bunch of slobs? I mean, that's been actually the opposite of my intention. I always feel like I'm very open about um, my learnings, my shortcomings, my mistakes. I think we're all in process and we're all starting at different places. And I'm, I, I think I'm actually a person who tries to look for ways to really support people and offer solutions and, and ideas. Strolling around the summit, it's easy to get drawn into the Goop universe. One, two, three. For a B12 shot or a different kind of needle. But what about an ear pierce? Well, I don't know. My ears are pretty pierced up. That's true. I know. Pretty good. Maybe I'll be like Gwyneth and get one right let's here. Let's go do it. I'll, I'm serious. I'll go do okay, it right let's now. Let's go do it. OK, let's go. All right, are you ready? We're ready. We're ready. We're ready. Yeah. Hey, hold, we, hold my hand. We got this. Oh, I love your, that is super cool. I'm happy. That's amazing. The double stack, now I want to do that. It's the next one. The next one. <laughs>
Oh my God, matching your rings? What I happened? Happened. Ultimate <laughs> bonding experience. Get your ears pierced. I'm always trying to get Siri to come get something pierced. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> Can we see it? It's fun. Oh, yeah. Which here one it is. is it? Uh, well, see, now I have dumb four. Question. I mean, who am I? I'm like in high school again. But isn't it kind of fun? It's that little one right there. Ooh, How many cool. do you have total? Whoa. <laughs> Oh, I know, she's it's like, cool. I'm no, such a goody goody that it's like, oh, this is my little rebellion. I have four piercings yeah. on this one now. The yeah. Gwyneth piercing is room. my fourth. Yeah. And I did this one with Jenna Bush Hager. Yeah. Wow. Um, and I have three on the Celebrity other side. Celebrity you an hour just to get your ears <laughs> <laughs> no. But anyway, the it was nose really is next. Fun. In one line, what is goop? I still have a hard time defining it. Yes. That. Well, you know what? You're not the target demographic. Yeah. It, but for women, a lot of women do know. I mean, it's wellness. It's wellness in general, but it's products. It's, yeah. I mean, the Goop Summit, for example, is yeah. what you, they've got panels and people come and talk. It's, you know, just yeah. a variety. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. lifestyle, yeah. wellness. There's a newsletter. There's a podcast. There's yeah. Wow. show on Netflix and you know it's funny it's a wide you know, net yeah. yeah it is and she's built this 250 million dollar company to cover the news you have to be in it we'll take you to the front lines of the story bringing your news feed to life streaming live every night it's your news playlist top story with Tom Yamas weeknights at 7 on NBC News now what do you see right now with Putin, and do you think he's a rational actor? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? The sanctions did not deter. Can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters bang down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We're joined now by Oscar winner Gwyneth Paltrow. She's one of the stars of the new Netflix series called The Politician. Gwyneth plays the mother of an ambitious high school senior who wants to be president one day and will stop at nothing to get there. It's an ambition mm -hmm. that makes her perhaps a little worried. I know this is my only pass. Why does that make you cry? <laughs> because I love you so much. And I know I'm gonna do whatever it takes to help you get what you want. And I'm sad for the person that's gonna turn me into. Gwyneth Paltrow, good morning. Good morning. This feels so timely on so many levels. <laughs> Ryan Murphy, your husband, Brad Falchuk, created this together. With now, Ian Brennan. Yes, and you guys have, you've worked together before with Glee. Yep. I mean, that's actually how you met Brad. That's right. But I heard you didn't exactly jump at this chance. He had to convince you a little bit. He had to convince me a little bit. I've got a pretty big day job over at <laughs> goop.com. So um, I'd sort of put acting on the back burner. But he, you know, he was writing and he was like, I think I'm writing a part for you. And I was like, I don't think I can do a part. And lo and behold, here I am. There you are. And it, by the way, it does seem like it was written for you. The, the, the part <laughs> is kind of just perfect for you. <laughs> what do you like about... I don't about know how I should take that. Well, Savannah. I know, I know, because actually it is true, because this mom character you play, she is a little, she might be a little bit twisted. She's complicated. Yeah, she is, but it's like, but you wear it so well. <laughs> but how, what was it like actually working with Brad and like here he's writing your words and you were interacting, you're an executive producer on the show. Like how did that dynamic all play out? It was the best. I, it was really easy and you know, I think when you, trust someone so much and you love someone so much and they know you so well and you know them it's really actually an interesting characteristic set of characteristics to bring into a workplace so it was really nice and this show has so many different stars in it i mean yes. you it's like some real heavy hitters ben platt was just here yesterday jessica lang plays like an incredible character another She's amazing. slightly twisted mom <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what it says about that you mentioned just a second ago that you're kind of, in a way, putting acting on the on the back burner. I do almost think of you more of an entrepreneur now. I mean, you yeah. really 
like goop seems to be your whole life. It sure is. <laughs> it sure is. Yeah. It's, it's. I mean, I love it so much. It's challenging in all the best ways, and um, I learn so much every day. And I love the products that we're making, and you know, the content that we're making. So it's really fun. Did you ever imagine that this is? where you'd end up, like in your 20s, if I said, oh, actually, you're going to want to be a businesswoman more than you're going to want to be an actress. You know what's funny? I was talking to Laura Dern the other day, and she said, do you remember when you were like 25, we were sitting on the porch, and you said, I think I want to go into business one day. And I had no recollection of it, but she said that I was eyeing it even then, which wow. is so strange. So it kind of oh, it's always in your heart. I and guess your DNA. so. Friends, welcome to your middle of the week pop start plus on the show today. One of the stars of the Gilded Age tells us about her deep connection to her character. Plus, speaking of friends, Courtney Cox stopped by to tell us all about her new spooky series. And later we're throwing it back to an absolute classic, My Cousin Vinny. But first, here's today's pop star. I start with the item we teased earlier this morning. Larry David, HBO's pulled the comedian's highly anticipated documentary just hours before it was scheduled to premiere on Tuesday. The network announcing in a statement on Twitter that the two-part special is being postponed without giving the fans any real update as to what they, when or why or what's going on. The tweet went on to explain, quote, Larry has decided he wants to do it in front of an audience. Oh. The project titled The Larry David Story was scheduled to air last night. Oh. So I guess at face value, he wants it in front of an audience. Maybe okay. behind the scenes, he doesn't love the documentary. Okay. Either way, you got a lot of power at HBO to be able to play <laughs> yeah, exactly. in the 11th hour. <laughs> Next up, People, the magazine just revealing the stars honored in this week's special Women Changing the World issue. On the cover, one of our favorite artists around here, Lizzo. Lizzo. The Grammy winner opening up to the magazine about dealing with body shamers and protecting her mental health. And in addition to the Truth Hurts singer, you're going to see some other great women in being recognized in the issue, including Rita Moreno, Goldie yeah. Hawn, and Jeopardy star Amy Schneider. For the full story, be sure and check out that new issue of People. It hits newsstands on oh. Friday. Next up, Earning It, narrated by chart-topping artist Ciara. The five-part docu-series is shining a light on some of the trailblazing women working in the NFL and opening doors for more to join both on and off the field. Here's a quick peek. The pipeline for women in the NFL wasn't built overnight. It is still a work in progress. But those leading the way have built a foundation. One that leads from the stands to the sideline. And for a chosen few, the Pro Football Hall of Fame. All five episodes of Earning It, the NFL's forward progress, are streaming now on Peacock. Next up, the courtship photo, your favorite new show. Dying. Love is in the air Dying. on NBC's new dating show. That's <laughs> oh. making all of your Bridgerton dreams a reality. The new series is taking one woman back in time to Regency era England, where she's going to awesome. be courted by 16 eligible suitors. And here's a peek at Miss Nicole Remy meeting them for the first time. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being a part of this with me. I'm just so grateful. I just want you guys to know, like, I am in pursuit of something that I feel like I need in my life. Like, I'm confident with everything else, and love is one thing that's missing. So, I'm 100% all is in. Is it real? That costume what budget is? looks like it's more than our annual what budget is? here. <laughs> that just looks cinematic, doesn't it? It's like it's stepping like it. into a fairy yeah. tale. It is a good idea go for to a ball, that era. You ride in a sure carriage. The guys is it like the Bridgerton Brilliant. meets The Bachelor? But these yeah. shows are known it's to get so cool. raunchy in the hot tub. It's going to be weird to see how that all works into this it's a civilized that society. That the Courtship. <laughs> is the name of it. It kicks off Sunday here on NBC. You can also oh. stream it the following day on Peacock. It's one of and now the plus in Pops Art. A couple more headlines for you. First up, getting organized. Our favorite tidying team is back. Clea and Joanna from the Home Edit are returning for a second season of their hit Netflix series. This time around, their superstar organizing skills have landed them a new lineup of celebrity clientele from all across the country. Here's a peek. We are professional organizers post Get Organized on Netflix. Everything changed overnight. We have clients all over the country, including some celebrities. Hi. How do you do it? Oh. Oh, wow. They have this way about them that adds a magic to the entire space. This space has just been overwhelming. Welcome okay. to the chaos. I literally have like a million props. I mean, that's why you guys are here. Challenge accepted. 
Wow, the big celebs on season two. I think that started with Hoda in her closet, though, a few years ago. Season two of Get Organized with the Home Edit. That streams on Netflix on April 1st. Coming up, and finally, Julia. On Tuesday, HBO dropped the first trailer for a new biographical series about the culinary icon Julia Child, starring Sarah Lancashire and David Hyde Pierce. The show's going to follow the famous chef's career with her long-running cooking show. Here's a peek of that. I had a recurring thought that I'd like to propose to you. An educational cooking show hosted by myself. Feels flimsy to me. This is public television, for God's sake. Shouldn't we go with someone with a more camera-friendly look and a less distinctive sound? You were onto something so big. I'm just sorry that my colleagues don't have the vision to see it yet. Where are these gentlemen? One of the advantages of looking like me is that you learn at a young age how not to take no for an answer. <laughs> Uh, foodies everywhere are going to love that. That looks good. Julia hits HBO on March 31st. Those are your Pop Start Plus headlines. Coming up, a look at the Gilded Age with one of its stars. Stick around. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. And welcome back to Popstar Plus, the new HBO show. Well, it's an HBO Max show. It's called The Gilded Age, and it's from the creator of Downton Abbey. It portrays what the transformative time of the 1880s New York might have looked like. Danae Benton plays Peggy Scott and told us her work has reminded her that she's always belonged. New York is a collection of villages. The old have been in charge since before the revolution, until the new people invaded. How I would describe the Gilded Age is just finery at its best meets really exciting social drama. I hope you're not against Miss Scott. She'll disrupt things. Maybe we need a bit of disruption. Peggy Scott. I feel like I'm deeply in love with her. She is a young, aspiring writer. As a black woman in the 1880s, she's educated. Her father owns a pharmacy. She's supposed to inherit the pharmacy, but she has her own dreams. There aren't any colored writers, especially women writers, who can make a living wage. I will soon find out how much colored women writers make. I remember when I read Peggy's breakdown and I saw myself so completely and I felt protective of her because she felt like this spiritual ancestor of mine that kind of also came to remind me that I've always belonged. I think that there's so many limiting perspectives for black people and black artists what we take in from the media, from our history books about what we can and can't be and the idea of being the first is kind of this illusion that keeps you cut off from your power and from your history and I always dealt with not quite feeling like I belonged. And then I saw Peggy and I was like, oh my God, I've always existed. You know, people who move through the world like me, black women who move through the world like me, and that tightrope that we walk has always been there. And so it's been really healing actually to get to share Peggy and get to be this intimate in relationship with, with her story. Have you ever thought about writing anything political, Miss Scott? I have. Don't ask her if she's a Republican. Well, why should I align myself with either party when I don't have the right to vote? 
Working with this entire cast has been a masterclass. As a theater kid, I mean, I don't know if there's any scenes without a Tony nominee or Tony winner present. It's so I was just fangirling inside all the time, and then Audra was just the icing on the cake that I didn't even dare imagine. I couldn't have, you know, my 15 year old self like obsessively watching her YouTube videos and seeing her do for me what I hope what what I hope Peggy gets to do for other. Um, young black girls is like so special. I'm going now. You just remember, we are all held fast, frozen in time until you finally allow us to move forward. Honestly, all of the scenes that I got to shoot in the Scott house were just so amazing. They were written so well. The set, like walking into this brownstone and having the whole set decorated with these photographs, these true photographs of black families from this time, black upper class families from this time. It was like images that have been really hidden from all of us in this country. We all had so much fun shooting that scene with Marion in the shoes. Like, we all just viscerally had our own experience with that type of white nonsense, including Louisa. Old shoes. I thought... What did you think, Miss Brooke? That we would need cast-off shoes? We're like laughing between takes at the looks that, you know, the housekeeper was giving her. It was just, it was so alive. Louisa and I talked a lot about Peggy and Marion's relationship, and we also talked about the nuances of intimacy between black and white women right now in 2022 and what makes it difficult and challenging. and where white supremacy really gets in the way of true sisterhood getting to form. And so we were like, how do we show a true honest relationship develop that also really gets to honor the time it would take to build that trust? I want viewers to see that we all have our divine right to our own sovereignty and to carving out a life path that makes sense to us. And I think that as a black woman, it's kind of a radical act. She's 20 years out of a country where she literally couldn't have owned her own body as her as herself. And so I want black people to see that kind of freedom and access to the story that's always been theirs and always will be. And I want the United States at large to really just take ownership of the true diversity that has made up this nation and that the story that we see doesn't exist without every type of person existing on every level. So I'm really excited for the audience to get to finally find out what all of Peggy's secrets are. You know, my mom, everyone's always like, why is she meeting with that lawyer? What's going on? You know, and so we will definitely get to see that story unfold and see the path it sets her on. And I think her and Marion kind of come to these crossroads moments of, um, are they going to choose themselves or are they going to choose this other path? And so I think everyone will be excited to see that. And then I think season two, for my character, I, I'm hearing whispers of just getting to go even deeper into the nuances of her world and to the nuances of the black world at that time. And so I am really thrilled about that. You can catch new episodes of The Gilded Age Monday nights on HBO and streaming on HBO Max. Coming up, our visit with a friend in Studio 1A. That's right, the delightful Courtney Cox. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. In the City of Angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing?
These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. And we're back. Courtney Cox, everyone's favorite tidy friend, is returning to the small screen in Shining Veil vale on Stars. She plays a mom who senses things are not quite right when her family moves into an old mansion. And Courtney stopped by Studio 1A to tell us all about the new show. Courtney Cox starred as everyone's favorite tidy friend, Monica Geller, on NBC's hit sitcom. And now she is returning to the small screen. It's a spooky new show. Courtney plays a wife and a mother of two going through a midlife crisis who seems to be the only member of her family seeing spirits in their new and haunted home. Courtney, this sounds like perfect for you. I was just thinking, like, it takes scream. It takes a little fun with friends. It's like the perfect combo. It really is. It's, yeah. uh, it's, pro it's just one of the greatest times in my life that I get to play a character that is so layered. She is a mother of a teenage daughter. Yeah. She is going through depression, menopause, <laughs> uh, writer's block, um, you name it. And she's trying to get her family back together after having uh, an affair with the handyman. Oh, so totally yeah. normal. And, yeah. and it's totally creepy, too. Like, yeah. there's a part of it that's really, like, scary. Oh, it's scary. scary, yeah. Mira, Sor Mira Sorvino, who is an incredible actor, plays uh, the character named Rosemary, who... I mean, like she is the she ghost. Had a very She's... dark past, and she is at this house, and she's scary. Okay. But, yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, so, did you, when you read the script, did you say, "Yeah, that's for me"? Absolutely, the first thing. I mean, yeah. it's created by uh, Sharon Horgan, yeah. who's this incredible actress, writer, yeah. and Jeff Astroff, who I've known since Friends. Uh -huh. So it's got this perfect combination of. It's a dark comedy. It's also, you know, really, really scary, and. Um, I just I couldn't be happier with it. It's, and it's fun. Did you shoot it on in the same lot that you shot Friends? Yeah. How weird was that? I know. Stage five. It's the first year we shot Friends, and mm -hmm. I walked in, and that's where I do my writing in the show. Mm -hmm. And I just all these memories flooded back. We had one bathroom, <laughs> and it just where the unchanged uh, most of the cast would play poker, and I was uh -huh. watching the OJ trial. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's what you <laughs> yeah. did during. Um, you're, I cannot believe your daughter is 17. I know. Are you freaking out? Is she, is she are you an empty nester yet? I'm gonna that, be, oh yeah, God. and I didn't think about it for a while and recently it hit me and uh, that that's gonna be tough. What, what, how do you anticipate it being? Like, do you think, will everything be different for you I when I think so, I mean, she is the kind of kid that's either in her room or out. So <laughs> there will be things like, I didn't notice she was here anyway. She's <laughs> very independent. And, uh, but I, it's gonna be hard for sure. I, by the way, she's got a beautiful singing voice. I got, I've got to listen to her on your, on your Instagram a little bit. It's really good. She's is, really good. Is that something she's thinking about? Oh, for pursuing? sure. She's going to go into the arts and a hundred percent. How about you? You're like playing the piano and you just yell to her, Coco, come play sing. And she's like, no, oh, I'm no. not coming. She just does. I can't get her to do anything. Yeah. I mean, I'm not talking about just the dishes. I cannot get her to help me on the, I just want her to sing for me on a little piano. No, <laughs> she won't. Um, and I, uh, your house, I was just, just watching some of the stuff you do. It seems like such a fun place to be. You invite in, like, you'll have Ed Sheeran, Elton John said that people are coming over for dinner. What is life like at your, at your home? Well, I've been having these Sunday gatherings forever because there's really no community in LA. It's so spread out. I don't yeah. have any family there. My clo close, closest sister is in Newport. So mm -hmm. I've been doing this for the longest I can remember. My grandmother used to do it. I have 21 first cousins. So I, I kind of need that You have 21 gathering. first cousins? Yeah. So now that I live in LA, I have all kinds of people. Yeah. I mean, that was a real coup to have Elton John. That doesn't. Well, how did that, that even happen? come to be? What was Ed that? Ed invited him for dinner because he was staying there, and I was obviously in awe. And, but, but I do have a really interesting group. It, it can change every week. It doesn't matter what you do. Um, it's it's nice. You meet you meet people that you would never normally meet, and I don't mean famous. I'm just talking about regular, just great people. 
Wow. Um, we're both 57, which when I was reading that, I was just like, wow. And you talked about, I think it was to one of the magazines, about how you, we were all chasing our youth. We want to go, you know, we want to go back in time. And how, how, have, how do you feel about that as we sit here in these chairs today? Well, I had made some comment that was really blown out of proportion. Yeah. I wasn't trying to teach anybody anything. It's, it, I was just talking about myself, and it was years ago. But, I mean, aging is not easy, but you just, um, at a certain point, you just relax into it and, and are happy with the parts that are good about it. I mean, I used to come here and would have been a nervous wreck, and now... I'm older. Totally chill. I'm comfortable. I just talk you to you used all to day. You a nervous wreck here. <laughs> well, I was just thinking, who does this? And it's all live. And oh yeah. my God, him timing and <laughs> four seconds waved a camera. <laughs> now it's like okay. you just yeah, you're different, a different place. Are you yeah. happy right now? Oh yeah, I'm really happy. By the way, your I, man is hot. Oh uh, yeah, you have a great man. Are you guys getting married or? Um, you know, we've been together for eight years, yeah. and he's just I, I don't I don't we don't think about marriage. We just are happy. Yeah. You're just happy. Yeah. Like Goldie and Kurt. You're just happy. Yeah. Yeah. And he's so talented, and I, I still have a talent crush. <laughs> See, that's the coolest. And a great voice. He's got a great voice, too. I don't mean singing. I sometimes just say, do you mind leaving me a voice message, <laughs> even so though we can, just hung up? Just so you can listen <laughs> to him. Wow. Well, good luck with this show. I hope a lot Thank of you. people check it out. It's called Shining Veil. It premieres Sunday night on Stars. Courtney, thank you for coming to see thank us. You. And we should mention Shining Veil premieres again on Stars Sunday night. Still to come, we're marking 30 years, if you can believe it, of the classic My Cousin Vinny. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter, in this closet. I took shelter, right in this closet, right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. You know, this month marks 30 years since the release of the beloved My Cousin Vinny. Joe Pesci starring as a wise guy Brooklyn lawyer who travels south to defend an innocent relative. And he joined today, back in 1992, to fill us all in on that role. Vinny Gambini, what's he like? Uh, well, he's a street guy from Brooklyn who has a lot of heart, a little tough guy. But um, he uses all his street smarts and uh, whatever brightness he has to uh, try to get his cousin out of jail who's being uh, held for murder in Alabama. So uh, it's a lot of fun when he gets down there. Yeah, it, Vinny's fairly unsophisticated about the judicial process. Uh, in terms of the movie, is he, is he ignorant? Well, I don't think he's ignorant. I mean, he just, well, he's ignorant to the process in the court. He's never been in the uh, courtroom before. So uh, he doesn't know what he's doing, but he learns. He watches the other lawyer, and um, he reads. Uh, the one thing that it doesn't show in the film uh, that was probably cut out somewhere along in the editing was that he's dyslexic. So uh, his big problem is that he can't uh, read fast enough, so it's, it's hard for him, uh -huh. and it's uh, pretty funny. How much freedom, Joe, did you have in terms of defining Vinny's character? I had a lot of freedom. Uh, I always start off that way with the director and producers. I, you know, I get a vision of what I think the character should look like and what he should be like from the script. And uh, then I usually go with that and they let me, thank God. 
Is it true what I heard that you used the character that you played in, in Raging Bull um, to, to help you define Vinny? No, I heard that too. Uh, I think that uh, somehow the writer said that when he was writing it, he had, uh, he may have said that he had me in mind and uh, maybe from, from seeing yeah. Raging Bull, but I certainly don't see any similarities. I think Vinny uses his street smarts to, uh, to better himself in a way, uh, you know, to educate himself better and, you know, he wants to be an attorney. So he's looking for a better life for himself, not just a street kid, you know. All right, let's run the clip in here and, and, and I'll set it up. Um, one of the, um, the two youths who charged, uh, uh, innocent youths, I might add, who are charged mm -hmm. in an Alabama town with murder is your cousin. This is where the two of them meet you and try to decide who's representing them. Uh -huh. What kind of cases have you had? Assault and battery? Armed robbery, you know. No. Well, I expect he's done burglary, grand theft auto, drugs, right, Vin? Nope. Nothing like that either. What kind, what kind, what kind of law do you practice? Well, up till now, uh, personal injury. <laughs> well, you're a trial attorney, right? I mean personal injury trials. Well, actually, this would be my first foray into the trial process. I haven't had to go to court yet. Knock on wood. You haven't had to go to court yet. How long have you been practicing? Almost six weeks. But, then you graduated from law school six years ago. What have you been doing since? Studying for the bar. Six years? Mm hmm That's a lot of studying. Hey, Joe, this role combined with your parts in, in the Super, the, the Home Alone series, the Lethal Weapon series, are giving you a reputation for comedy. Is that, is that the plan? Uh, no, it's not really the plan. It's just, I, you know, I take things as they come. Uh, the scripts as they come along that I like, I wind up doing. So uh, it's been uh, running into comedies and... Uh, I'll go along with whatever yeah. comes, as long as it's good script, you know. You're an actor who's in demand right now, and what criteria are you, are you accepting or declining scripts? Um, geez, I don't know. I just, uh, I have to really like the characters and enjoy it myself. That's basically what I go by. You, um, you've been making movies back-to-back -back for nearly three years right now. Is that the kind of schedule you want to keep? No, I have to slow up so that I can work on my golf game so I can beat you. Well, you lost last time, but look, um, let me... <laughs> no, I didn't lose. You wait didn't... a minute, wait a minute. What? I get shots and I won, remember? Well, you get shots and we flatted. You, you... <laughs> <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> I wasn't going to bring it up, but don't worry about it. Look, um, one, quick, one quick quote from an interview I saw you said to the LA Times, and I'm quoting you, okay? It yeah. says, at this point, I'm sick of making movies. I have three movies coming out next year, but I might not make any more after that. I mean it. I might just stop. Hmm. I don't think I had that much money. <laughs> <laughs> you, still, uh, you don't still feel don't that way. I, well, I want to I'll probably stop for a little bit. I mean, I need a rest. That's, that's somebody talking that just needs a rest, I think, you know? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll probably, after, after Home Alone, which ends in April, I'll probably try to get at least a month off, and I think that'll cool me out a little bit. I mean, I have to do this. It's, you know, it's something that I really have to do. It's not, uh, right. I just love to act, so I'm, I'm going to wind up uh, doing it until I probably croak on behind the camera. All right. After that, we'll have a rematch. I mean, in front of the camera, not I, behind it. I understood what you meant. Oh, what a classic. Who doesn't love My Cousin Vinny? Plus, it landed Marissa Tomei an Oscar. Well, that's going to do it for today's Pop Star Plus. Be sure and join us right back here tomorrow. Have a great day. Welcome to Today All Day. All day? Today All Day. All day. This is a long oh, way of man. asking, yeah. who's your okay. favorite character you've ever all played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. you got to have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. My buddy Cal cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today. With simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, now. How wow. good do they look? 
I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. We've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look, look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Will you judge okay. us in a cook-off? I yes. will. And okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. Hello to all of our friends out there watching Today All Day. I'm here with Savannah Guthrie. You're watching our digital show. It's called Today in 30. Yes, we're so glad to have you with us, and we've got a lot to cover this morning. We will bring you the latest overnight on the situation in Ukraine with a report from Kiev, plus our exclusive interview with a woman who's got a real perspective on the crisis unfolding there, the former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine. She's speaking out for the very first time. We also welcomed some stars to the studio. Tony winner Kristen Chenoweth was here to tell us all about her beautiful new children's book. And the two of us got to hang out with Ryan Reynolds earlier this week on the fourth hour. Jen and I caught up with him to chat again along with Ryan Jung, co-star on The Adam Project. So wait, he cheated on us with you and Jenna? Yeah, he did. He Rude. did. And he brought his A-plus game too. Twice. Oh. You no. Know. Anyway, that's it. It's time for Today, Today in 30. 30. We begin with NBC's Richard Engel again for us in Kyiv. Richard, good morning. Good morning, Savannah. Ukrainian officials are expressing frustration. As you know, they've been calling for a no-fly zone. They have been also calling for more aircraft to protect the skies, in particular Soviet-era aircraft that Ukrainian pilots already know how to fly. And it looked like there was a potential deal yesterday when Poland said it would give Ukraine all of its MiG-29s, sending them first to a U.S. airbase in Germany. But the Pentagon said no, that that was too close to direct military involvement. And now the deal appears to be off. And Ukraine's President Zelensky said that this is no time for indecision, that they need the planes now to stop the Russian offensive. Russian troops are trying to grind out a victory by beating Ukrainian towns and cities into submission. But so far, all that Russia is doing successfully is killing Ukrainian troops and innocents. At an intensive care unit in Kiev this morning, a doctor showed us the wards. The windows all covered to prevent sniper fire. In every room, a victim of Russian fire. All civilians. A man shot in the leg. Another whose house was bombed. He was trapped under the rubble for two days and just arrived here this morning. Vladimir Putin says that the Russian army is not bombing civilians, that it's no civilians are being hurt. It's a lie. <laughs> it's an obvious lie. Down the hall, an entire family. They were escaping their neighborhood north of Kiev. A Russian soldier told them it was safe to leave. But as they started moving in their car, other Russian troops opened fire, shooting them all. Katerina was shot in the back. Tanya took 12 bullets in her legs. The Ukrainian government is standing firm behind President Zelensky. He addressed the British Parliament by video and paraphrased Winston Churchill's fight them on the beaches speech of the Battle of Britain. We will fight in the forests, in the fields, on the shores. The message of resistance to the end struck a deep chord in the United Kingdom. Across Ukraine, Zelensky's fighting spirit seems to be contagious. Miro Popovich, who served in the U.S. military, fought in Afghanistan, used the GI Bill and became an American citizen, is now defending Kiev, where he was born. We're on the right side. I mean, they came to our home trying to destroy us. We don't have a choice. Uh, United, we stand divided, we fall. So that's it. Do you think you're going to win? 
by by win i mean push the russians out have a government right now it looks like we are winning uh we're pushing them back and they have no fuel and they're dying russia's military offensive has often looked inept with vehicles running out of gas soldiers surrendering and abandoning trucks full of weapons but the embarrassing videos don't tell the full picture a senior U.S. military official says Russia still has 95 percent of its military force in Ukraine intact, more than enough to destroy the country's cities and create much more suffering. And once again this morning, Ukrainian officials are sounding the alarm about Chernobyl. Russian forces took over the Chernobyl exclusion zone, which still contains radioactive material. And now, according to Ukrainian officials, they have cut off the area from the main power grid. And Ukrainian officials are worried that it could stop monitoring systems, stop protective equipment. It's unclear, however, if the Russians have brought in their own power to the site. Mm. All right. Very disturbing. Richard, thank you very much. I'm going to turn now to a woman with a unique perspective on this war, former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Ivanovich. She was appointed in 2016. She served in that role until 2019. But then she was abruptly recalled by President Trump, who claimed Ivanovich was undermining the push to pressure Ukraine into investigating the Biden family. Her ousting and her testimony on Capitol Hill were key factors in the Trump impeachment and Senate trial. And Ambassador Ivanovich is with us exclusively ahead of the release of her new memoir. It's called Lessons from the Edge. Ambassador, good morning. It's good to see you. I never dreamed we'd be meeting under these circumstances. Uh, and I want to ask you about what's happening in Ukraine, a country you know so well. First, just your impressions on whether the U.S. and the NATO allies are doing enough. Clearly, we've seen these crippling sanctions, the Russian economy in free fall. But Ukraine wants help in the form of a no-fly zone. We saw the Polish deal overnight rejected mm -hmm. by the U.S. and NATO. Is the U.S. and the West, are we doing enough? We are doing a lot, and we need to keep on doing more. And I think the administration and NATO are looking at what more can be done. Uh, there's uh, unbelievable security assistance that is flowing to Ukraine that is vital humanitarian assistance, economic assistance. And I think uh, the administration and NATO do need to look at um, the possibility of a no-fly zone for humanitarian purposes. Of course, they say that means you're walking into World War III. You're having a direct confrontation with Russia. What's the counter to that? I mean, everybody wants to help Ukraine. Right. And everyone is terrified of a nuclear confrontation with right. Russia. Right. So that is a real concern. But I also think that we cannot let Putin set the terms of this debate and have Putin decide um, how this is going to go. Um, but we nevertheless need to be very careful and plan everything out well. Yesterday, the CIA director told okay. Congress that Putin's mindset has hardened his words in recent years. He's become more isolated and he is likely to double down. What's your assessment? How far is he willing to take this despite the economic and other pain he may be feeling from this? I think that assessment is probably correct. Um, I think everything we've seen is that Putin is not yet on a path to an off ramp and that he will double down. Uh, and the Ukrainian people are the ones that are going to pay the price. But so are the Russian people. And I think that's important to remember. And uh, many have suggested that Putin won't stop with Ukraine. And that's that's really <clears throat> the bedrock of Ukraine's argument for more military intervention from the West, that if you don't stop him here, he's going to keep going. And I think that's what we've seen over the last two decades, where uh, Putin went into Georgia in 2008, Ukraine in 2014, got away with it, and thought he was going to get away with it again. And that was a huge miscalculation. Is there an off-ramp for Putin? I mean, people talk about saving face or some kind of mm -hmm. graceful exit. I, it's unclear whether he even cares about such things. But is there a way out of this? I think there's always a way out. Diplomats are very optimistic, always. Um, and so the Ukrainians and the Russians are still talking. That's important. Uh, and um, obviously, we are looking for ways to to reach out. And um, when uh, Putin is in the right place, I think there will be uh, a way to conduct those negotiations. Why do you think he chose to invade now? Yeah, that's a, a really good question. Um, I think that he... Um, has been obsessed with Ukraine for a long time. You can see it in his um, actions as well as in his writings and his speeches. 
Uh, I think, you know, he's got uh, presidential elections coming up in 2024. He wants to look good and strong. And he miscalculated. He thought this would be a cakewalk. And it is not. The Ukrainian people are resisting, as those of us who know the Ukrainian people knew they would. That leads me directly to my next question. You spent time, you've walked in those streets, you know those people, you've eaten at those cafes, you were ambassador, you spent many years in Ukraine, a couple of tours there. Tell us about the will of the Ukrainian people. What are we seeing on display? And, and President Zelensky as well. Yeah. So I think, just to start with President Zelensky, I mean, he's a comedian, as everybody knows. He's also a businessman. He started this um, media conglomerate, a self-made man. Uh, and now he's president. And that was extremely unlikely. But he has met his moment. He's a hero now, inspiring not only the Ukrainian people, but also the world. The Ukrainian people are, um, you know, unruly. They love freedom. They're not going to let anybody tell them what to do. Certainly not Putin. They're kind of like us uh, in that sort of uh, uh, very independent uh, way. And they have um, always uh, been strong and independent. And I think you're seeing that now that they're not going to give in. They're not going to give up. Everybody from, you know, little kids to grandmas <laughs> packing Molotov cocktails and other things. I mean, it's in it's incredible. Well, t talking about resilience, your book is called Lessons from the Edge, and it details your whole life in foreign service. But in particular, people will remember you testifying at the <laughs> impeachment trial of President Trump, a difficult decision for you. Why did you decide to testify and was it worth it in the end? So it was a difficult decision because, uh, you know, I've kind of been a rules following diplomat for 33 years uh, and the Trump administration was telling me not to testify. But in the end, I decided that um, my um, duty to the Constitution was greater than to any individual or a particular um, branch of government. But it was, a, it, was, it was a tough decision. Well, it's a heck of a story. Marie Ivanovich, thank you for being here this morning. And want to mention that the memoir is called Lessons from the Edge. It's actually out next Tuesday, but you can find out more about it at today.com slash shop. Madam Ambassador, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. This morning, a closer look at the impact of skyrocketing oil prices. Well, yeah, everybody's witnessing the toll on the gas mm -hmm. prices. National average jumping another eight cents just overnight to a new record, four dollars and twenty-five cents. But experts say this is going to affect more than just the price at the pump. Yeah, NBC Sam Brock joins us from Florida. He's got more on that part of the story. Hey, Sam. Good morning. Hoda, guys, good morning. Look, 60% of oil consumption is for fuel, which means 40% is for everything else from the plastic in your smartphones to, of course, the produce, fertilizers for produce like fruit, also the grains that go to your chickens, all of that, which means that your grocery bill and many other bills for that matter are about to get a boost. It's a ripple effect that stretches far beyond just filling up. The skyrocketing cost of oil hitting you at the pump tied to not tens or hundreds, but thousands of other products. Sure, there's delivering the items. The majority of them are going to be on truck or rail, which consumes diesel fuel. But unknown to many shoppers, oil is in your products, too. Petroleum derivatives make up plastics and electronics like TVs and smartphones. For home and construction, they're in furniture, carpet, and roof shingles. At the grocery store, the crunch on fertilizer impacts produce, grain, and even meat and dairy. And everyday goods like moisturizer and sunscreen are packaged in plastic. Basic lotion for everyday use. At University Pharmacy in South Florida, Natasha Patel sees the upticks on her shelves. But she says medicine, from asthma and cholesterol to blood pressure medication, is also on a steep curve. In some cases, up 200% or more with petrochemicals often involved in production. It's so hard to tell a patient, especially with groceries going up, gas prices going up, to tell them, hey, now your medication that you need on a day-to-day -day basis to survive is going up as well. Nothing operates in a vacuum. Supply chain issues are also playing a role, making isolating the spike from oil alone very difficult. But it's a huge spoke in the wheel. A lot of people know there's petroleum products in tires, but if you're using a bike as an example, what about the cables on the brakes, the tape on the handles, the styrofoam in the helmets, the plastic in these bottles? Half the products in the store have some form of petroleum. At No Boundary Sports in Coral Gables, Oscar Paez tells me it's a perfect storm of issues. Uh, shortage of supply, 
we have logistical issues and you see gas prices go up or petroleum-based stuff, you'll see higher prices. While racing to get a bike might save you on fuel, some more practical tips for staying conscientious at any point include buying off-brand food products. The most expensive ones are often at eye level and shopping for appliances at independent stores where you might negotiate a better bargain. Either way, shoppers are starting to see double vision. If you wear eyeglasses, the cost of polycarbonate lenses just went up. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter, in this closet. I took shelter, right in this closet, right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We are back with a friend who can really do it all, Kristen Chenoweth. She's a Tony winner, an Emmy winner, a best-selling author. And now she's out with her very first children's book. It's called What Will I Do With My Love Today? And Kristen, good morning. You are love as far as I'm concerned. You're like a ray of sunshine Thank you. coming in here. Tell me about this book because I know it's really close to your heart. When the pandemic very first hit, I thought, what am I going to do with myself today, like many of us did? And then it evolved into what will I do with my love? How am I going to show my love? Because we can't touch, hug, love, all the things we're supposed to do, right? Or yeah. that come naturally to us. And I, I rescued my dog, Thunder, Thunder Pup, named after the NBA basketball <laughs> team. And I'm adopted myself. And I don't know, just the spirit just said, write about rescuing each other. Especially, mm. it's easy to be there for one another when things are great, but when it's tough and she's been there for me and we re you know I rescued her and she's been and my my parents rescued me in a way it's so such a, that's the book it's it's beautiful because first of all I love for little kids to, you know we say what can I do with my love today like how can I spread Show my it. love this is a great message for kids and it's yes. thought provoking for them yeah. but the message about adoption mm -hmm. sort of sneaks in there yeah and it's so sweet. Why did you want to tell this story? Who do you think it's for? I think it's for uh, everybody to understand there's a little bit of a stigma like, oh, you were adopted. And this is how my mother told me that I was always, oh, I always knew it. She said, the lady that had you in her belly couldn't take care of you like she wanted to. And she loved you so much. And she gave you a life, but we gave you we, we're giving you, she gave you life, we're giving you a life. Mm. And I loved that message and I wanted to sneak it in there because take the stigma off and it's Christy Dawn and Thunder Pup taken on New York City. It's so sweet. The illustrations are adorable. Main Diaz. Now amazing. look, I have to thank you because I have a little daughter. She's seven years old. She's like my clone. She looks up to you very much and you were uh -huh. so sweet when we went to Broadway's opening yes. night. Do you remember this? Of course she said. She got to meet you and you sang to her. Yes. Do I think we've got the video of it. You sang to <gasps> Vail, my little daughter. There we are. <gasps> And then she started talking. And, and at your ballet class. <laughs> so she wanted me to tell you something. What? She tried out for her play, and she was cast as Glinda. And she has been asking me ever since. No! Did you tell Miss Chenoweth, who she calls you OG Glinda, <laughs> the original Glinda, that she was cast no! as Glinda? When? When? And just she was that was in December. She had oh, her big debut. I wish I'd known. Oh, honey, Val, I'm so proud of you, and it is the best part. 
<laughs> or Galinda, as we like to That's say. That's right. Speaking oh, of, I love it. Love. You are in love. You're getting married. Yes. I mean, it's just, we were just talking about it. It's just right on time. You said later in life, but right on time. Yeah, I, w I always felt insecure and sort of weird about it happening so late because I was the girl that wasn't going to do it. And it, it did. Mm. So you're planning your wedding? I'm trying. What? I think it'll just be one of those things that you'll read about one day and I'll be like, oh, she did it. Oh, <laughs> it's so wonderful. But hi, Josh. I love you. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's just the dearest. And then speaking of Wicked, Ariana Grande, who yes. I know is a dear friend of yours, yes. has been cast to play Glinda yes. in the movie version. Yes. And so has she come to you for advice? Look at you too. I love her so much. I've known her since she was 10. Um, I think that Crown and Juan are going to the exact correct person. Mm -hmm. And I think she's going to nail it. People don't, maybe some people do know this about Ari, but she's really, really funny. And Glenda has to do funny and drama. She has to do it all and sing high and sing low. And so there's the girl. I was going to say, I did she, cry when she got it. Oh, I bet. I bet you did. I would say she's the perfect Glenda, but I'm with the perfect Aww. Glenda. Thank you so much for your kindness and your love. You spread it everywhere. Now this book will tell little ones how Thank they can you. too. Thank you. Thank you so Hi, much. Hi, Vale. I'm proud of you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> she's going to flip. I am. Wait, say it again on camera. Hi, Vale. I'm proud okay, of you. Okay, I'm like mom of the year right now. Good. She didn't have to make her bed forever. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. The book, What Will I Do With My Love Today? You Are Our Sunshine. Thanks. You can snag your copy at today.com slash shop. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson streaming weeknights at eight on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson now weekdays at five on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson streaming weeknights at eight on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. What do you see right now with Putin, and do you think he's a rational actor? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? The sanctions did not deter. Can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Okay, we all know the name Ryan Reynolds. who has been in dozens of Hollywood films. But one name you may not know, you will know very soon, Walker Scobell. He is so cool. He's teaming up with Ryan for his very first movie, Netflix's The Atom Project. Ryan plays a time-traveling pilot who crash lands into 2022 and teams up with his younger self, played by Walker. Take a look. Do we get a lot of girls in college? Adam, I... time travel exists. <laughs> it exists. Isn't that crazy? Every conceptual idea you have about the universe has just been thrown out the window. Yet your big question is, do I get laid? Do I? Jesus Christ. I was just wondering. Well, wonder in silence. Oh, my God. It's going to happen. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Walker, that is that. Wait, why, why do you look disgusted? This is the first time I've ever thought to myself, I'm glad I don't have any sons. <laughs> <laughs> Walker. Okay, this is your very first movie, and it's with Ryan Reynolds. Okay, was it at all intimidating working with this guy or not? Uh, not at all. Really? Not at all? Was How he... come? Careful, you think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was. He was a lot taller than I thought he'd be. Yeah. I know. Um, Usually I, I, I actors are short, lips. right? I wear yeah. four-inch lips on yeah. set. He has heels yeah. on. Just 
Oh, was he was he no funny? Level. Did he make you laugh? I, I don't I don't think I've ever laughed at any of his jokes. <laughs> You are the same person. No, no, Who are you people? Cold. He's a stone cold killer. Okay, wait. Finding this kid is like the perfect, he's the perfect kid to cast. How mm -hmm. did you find him if he's never been in a movie? Like, how did this come to be? We read <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of kids at all different ages, okay. starting with the umbilical cord right up to about 12 <laughs> years old. And um, I, I, I feel like we read every kid on earth. And then one day we saw this tape for this kid, Walker Scobell, that no one had heard of. The cast had never heard of him, never okay. done anything before. And it was perfect. The second sentence out of his mouth, we, we, I looked at Sean Levy, my co-producer yeah. and director, and just said, that's our guy. Oh, just like that. that. Yeah, Second and Sean sentence. was ahead of me. He'd already texted me. We found our kid. Oh yeah. my gosh! Yeah. I mean, yeah. to hear that, yeah. you've always wanted to act. It's something you yeah. want to do, continue <laughs> to do. Was it? Was it kind of crazy to get this role? It. It was. Uh, it was. I. I was expecting to do like a lot, bunch of little parts, then work myself up to the big parts because oh, I yeah. originally just wanted to be an Avenger. <laughs> and so, but this is pretty close to an Avengers. So. It really is. Did you ever see Deadpool? Uh, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. A answer for real. I uh, not allowed to. I don't know what you're talking about. He's this. He's seen Deadpool. How, how many, many times? Be honest. You can tell. Uh, for legal reasons, <laughs> I don't think I can answer that. Oh so my long. gosh, I love him Wait, so how many times much. Did you see it? Answer. <laughs> A uh, couple. More than seven? Hundred. Couple. More than seven. He can oh. recite every syllable Wait, what? Of, of either movie. He can just go, and even the, the even like those crappy, you know, <laughs> expositional <laughs> yeah. lines that no one remembers. Yeah. He knows every single one of them, including stage direction. Oh my god! I think I've spent more time watching Deadpool than I have being outside. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, wait. And you're in seventh. What grade are you in? I'm in seventh grade. Seventh grade. So, what do the kids in school think of your uh, your new gig? Um, well, they don't really. They thought I was, it's like a flashback, so I never like met anyone, which is nice yeah. because uh, everyone. It's so weird though. Everyone keeps coming up to me and asking me what Ryan Reynolds smells like. <laughs> what does he smell like? I've actually been wondering yeah. that same thing. The wood? I think the wood. I think fresh, like, I think it's like yeah. Lever 2000. Say, I think sort of sage. It's, you'd think it's butternut squash and cinnamon, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's actually baby vomit. <laughs> What a beautiful smell. Okay, Ryan, you all seem to have a little bit of a friendly feud going on. You also have one with one of our favorites, Hugh Jackman. We love this battle. Did you send a life-size picture of yourself to his dressing room? It was a charcoal sketch. It was a, a life-size photograph. I wouldn't, I'm not tacky, okay? It was a two-scale charcoal sketch of myself. And, uh, and, and how was he... that received? Well, the first one uh, was not received well. I think it nearly gave him a heart attack because it was opening night. But when he turned around and saw the second full length, uh, in a, me in a different pose, a charcoal sketch of myself. I think that's where he really, he, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Oh. We, oh, we wow. have to say, mm -hmm. you're, you um, had just had the red carpet for this mm -hmm. film. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say it, but your wife stole the show. Always. She always and that does. rainbow dress. Well, I mean, I think I we saw you in the background. Wow. Look at, Look that. at that. So maybe your future, if you yeah. play each other, could be that. What do you think about that? You too could wear that exact dress <laughs> at the sequel to The Adam Project. Okay, play. since you play the same people, yeah. right, in no. the film, mm -hmm. we thought we should play a game to see how similar you really are okay. in real life. Ooh. Are you ready? Shout out the answer right when you get it. Favorite, Favorite snack. snack. Lucky Charms. You're supposed to answer at the same time. <laughs> wow, a cereal. Frosted 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 okay, so one, two, three. three. Favorite sports movie. team. What? Movie. Oh, movie, sorry. Oh, movie. Deadpool 2. Okay. Deadpool 2, wow. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. Favorite, Favorite sports, sports team. team. Uh, Wrexham Red Dragons. Wrexham Red Dragons. Okay. And most annoying <laughs> thing about Ryan Reynolds. Go. Go. His face. Uh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Shots. Fired. Let's go, Bell. Shots fired. I'm a very power, 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 powerful person in Hollywood. I can have you completely destroyed. <laughs> All right. You can get wow. the Adam Project streaming on Netflix starting this Friday. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thank you, guys. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. 
What do you see right now with Putin? And do you think he's a rational actor? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? The sanctions did not deter. Can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. All right, hope you'll come back tomorrow. We've got another big morning on today. Samuel L. Jackson is oh going to be God. here. No snake, no snakes on this plane. Uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay, before you go, did you guys know this? Savannah oh. has a cooking show. Wait. Hannah has a cooking don't, you, show. You don't have to laugh. Okay, you can Say stream it. it. It's on today all day because starting from scratch, that's the name of Savannah's <laughs> cooking show, is out now. Bye. It's really good. See you in the kitchen. See you tomorrow. Over the years, I've been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. We had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Oh, I, you know, I almost got out of this one, please. <laughs> Turn it down. Oh, my God. I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. But I'm hoping to put that all behind me. Today, cookbook author and Southern comfort food extraordinaire, hostess with the mostess, Elizabeth High School, is here to teach me the basics of how to cook. She's gonna be my guide as I attempt to make steak two ways. First, marinated skirt steak with roasted pepper and onions, and then a steakhouse style filet mignon with roasted Brussels sprouts. I've been waiting a long time to use that cast iron pan. Frankly, I've been avoiding it, but no more. So let's get started. Yes! I know, I'm so excited. You are my Obi-Wan This my is Luke it. Skywalker. This is it, honey. I promise we're going to make it happen. And, I mean, honestly, who does not love a perfectly cooked steak? I love a steak. Everybody does. And I swear, I swear, it's so much easier than you could ever imagine. Okay? okay. This is our plan. Marinate the skirt steak, cut and prep the vegetables, grill the skirt steak, sear, baste, and finish the filet mignon, let the meat rest, Cut and serve. All right, so here is our marinated skirt steak. Go ahead and get this out. Do I just go to the butcher and say, I want skirt steak? Exactly. They won't laugh at me. No, let's unfold him. Why do we call it skirt steak? It's just that cut of meat. It goes actually uh, under the abdomen. That oh, is yes, exactly like, where it, it goes. It goes like to fit you, oh, right, the waist. Now, okay. Yes, if you have a piece of meat that is as big as your waist, yes. you're going to want to cut it. Yes. Okay? So we're going to cut this into four pieces so that we can manage it in our, um, in our skillet. Now, okay? is this one of those against the grain things? Not right now. After we cook it? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay. But right now, I just need you to cut this into cut four pieces. Okay, I got it. Yep, yeah. Nice, long, good. Very, look at you. Oh, I think I'm, look, we get some skills. We're just going to measure out all of our ingredients for our marinade okay. and put them right in the bag. Cheers. I mean, seriously, it's Wednesday. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Only on days that end with Y. <laughs> Those are the only days I drink. Okay, let's go. One quarter cup packed light brown sugar. This I know how to do because of bacon. Now, and remember this. Yes, open this up. This is kind of interesting. So we put a little piece of bread in here. Why? Uh, well, because it's going to keep the brown sugar from getting hard. This is very soft brown I'm sugar. I'm telling you, that's because of the bread. Roll it in there. Let's okay. do our soy. Two tablespoons soy sauce. One tablespoon, One tablespoon of balsamic. Very good. One can chipotle in adobo well, sauce. First, it's tomatoes, onion, garlic is oh. making the sauce. It's earthy, it's smoky, and it's going to add another depth of flavor to this marinade. So let's chop this up. Okay. We want to chop Are it up. Are we chopping up all this? No, all this uh, no, that would set us all on fire. And so we want it to be. You're good. Okay. Yep. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And then once you kind of get through. Mm -hmm. 
It's real juicy. Then you can always go back over it. Yeah, like I would just, my instinct would be to kind of like do this thing. Uh, very nice. Yes, look, that, see, did you just see that? Instinct. Instinct. You're getting it, you're getting okay. it. So because it's a little bit of a tougher piece of meat, mm -hmm. that's why we're gonna marinate this. Now okay. listen, you can do this for eight hours. We would love 24 hours. You mean marinating? Exactly. So, I mean, if you ran home and, you know, even if you only had an hour, you know, that's gonna be good. So First, we wanna than... pull all of this air out of this. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's one of my favorite parts. I don't know you why do. I, I love loving you. that. I love I you. Love... Skirt <laughs> steak, I love you. And so then what we'll do is massage it. Do you feel like this is I do. fully coated? I think coated? you've done an absolutely beautiful job with that. And then yes, that is gonna go into the fridge to marinate. And so we'll okay. just put it back here. All right. So now we finished our marinade and we're gonna start our roasted vegetables. Okay. And I have got something that is going to change your life when it comes to this. Tell me. So this is, it has all the vegetables that you might wanna roast and then the different times. And you don't have to have a recipe. This is gonna be so freeing for you, honestly. So we're gonna start with our Brussels sprouts. I'm gonna show you and then you're gonna finish. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna cut the end off of it and then we're gonna cut it in half okay. and it's gonna go into our bowl. Okay. Okay. What about frozen? Uh, Brussels sprouts. Yeah. Well, th what happened? That's is, how we did in the '70s in my mom's well, kitchen. Well, and that is why we didn't like them. Oh, I hated them. They were just when I was a little kid to put one bite of a Brussels sprout oh, in my mouth there was, was oh god, it was close hell on to earth. torture as you could hell imagine. On earth. If you roast them though, it's a whole new world. And then here we are again. You've got those done. Those All are right. beautiful. Set them over here. And that's what we're going to pair with that filet mignon. Okay. And now we're going to move on to our peppers. And so what I like to do is cut it in half. Go ahead and cut it straight just in like half. That. Uh huh. Being very careful to see where you're. Beautiful. And then I just pull this right out. Oh. And then we're going to make nice long slices. You want to keep it even. Mm -hmm. That's one of the main secrets about roasting vegetables, mm -hmm. is that they all need to cook and get finished at the same time. What about these white bits? Like so I those, used to cut those out. And sometimes. you can, you can. I want to show you something. Mm -hmm. So if you will hold your knife here, mm -hmm. it's going to give you a lot more security, mm -hmm. and I think you're going to be more comfortable with it. I like your grip. The grip is better. It's so much better because you have more control, and when you have more control of your knife, you're more comfortable. All right. So now we're going to get to our our onions. Oh, onions. How are we doing it though? Dice? Now, we're going to do just like a rainbow. So just a half moon. So we're going to cut it in half. Okay. Both ends off and then keep going. So what we're going to do, we're going to roast all of our vegetables on separate pans because again, well, that sounds like a pain. Get, well, it is, but it's really going to make that much of a difference. When you're only using a few ingredients mm -hmm. and salt and pepper, the technique is so important in making this successful. Okay. okay? I would have thrown so it on the I know you would have. Who cares? And some of them would have burned, and okay. some of them would have been raw, and then you would have been frustrated and said, I don't know how to roast vegetables. Yeah. Okay, so it's technique. Yeah. You're getting very good with your knife, and I'm proud of you. Well, thank you. I'm working on it. But I do have to be reminded about where to hold it, to grip it. It's like a bat when you when you when you choke up on the bat. Or your tennis racket. You know yeah, this. I do. If you held your tennis racket with your finger hanging out like that, you wouldn't be worth a damn. Mm -mm. Okay. I'm so. still not worth a damn. <laughs> <laughs> Just FYI, but you, I t point taken. Point taken. So now I want you to generously olive oil these. Okay, there, there we go. Okay. Beautifully coated. Mm -hmm. Good. And that's going to help to ensure that this is going to caramelize. Okay. We want it to get that beautiful brown color. Now I see, can't stop. See, I, I know, it's kind of fun, yeah. isn't it? Now we're going to salt it generously. We're going to pepper it generously. Now do I need to like sprinkle, then toss, or just sprinkle, throw it all in there? Sprinkle. Too much? That's, that's a it. lot. That's going to be done. Okay, okay, that's all you need, and then we'll toss it. It kind of helps if you want to you know, go ahead and go in the circle so you're not just dumping it oh, in the middle. Okay. That will kind of help it just okay. a little bit. I would say less pepper than salt, no? And, and that's the great news. It's yours. Okay. So do whatever you want. This recipe is not the boss of you. Yeah. You are the boss of it, okay? Right. Take that recipe. <laughs> I'm not going right, to take it anymore from you. Mix. Now, and also at home, listen, if you don't want to pull out three different sheet pans. I don't own three different sheet well, pans. Well, that's the deal. Okay, I get that. You can always separate okay. it. Okay. So you could do Brussels sprouts here, onions here. So let's okay. throw the onions on one. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay, okay, I just uh -huh. need to share. Okay. Yes. It says don't crowd the pan. Correct. We keep, do not want to crowd it. These want to keep their social distance. Let's mm -hmm. flip these little guys over. Oh. Because the more surface area that's on the bottom of this pan, okay. the more beautiful they're going to be. Mm. All right, and now we have oh, no. one more. Spread that And why out. are we doing three pans again? Because they're all going to cook at different times. Oh, okay. Okay, and if we otherwise, the Brussels sprouts are going to be raw, these are going to be overdone, and yeah. the onions are going to be burnt, and we cannot have that. No. And so now we'll go in the oven with these. 
Why don't we put peppers and onions on top? And then we will do our sprouts on the bottom. Okay, well that was easy enough. There we go. Mm -hmm. Ooh, now, okay. so what we'll do is we're gonna let that cook for a little bit, okay. and then what we wanna do is we'll wanna rotate the pan. Like just move them around. Exactly. But do I have to flip them? I could get obsessed about flipping each other. You could, over. but you don't need to. Okay. okay, very nice, that's good. Okay, all right. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia, can you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia, can you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world, because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. All right, so now our vegetables are roasting in the oven. You just gave them a nice toss, so we're going to leave those alone for a minute, and we are going to get ready to cook that beautiful skirt steak. Okay. All right, so we'll go ahead and grab that. It's 24 hours it's been marinating. So Now, what we're going to do is pull it out. We're going to put it on this paper towel. What will happen when we get ready to cook this? Smells our amazing. pan is going to be as hot as the hinges of hell. Do you understand me? OK. And if this marinade is still on here. Like that was droopy. No, you're good. Okay. We're going to pat it. I mean, we're about to get serious with this. Okay. Because it will end up just steaming it and almost boiling it. Oh. And that's not what we want. We want that beautiful caramelized crust. So we are really going to get all the moisture out of it. Okay. So we are going to press on this. We're soaking it up. Now let's come over here. I want you to. Okay, just a question. Is yes. this pan hot? Hot as the hinges of hell, honey. It is hot. Do not touch it. Brush it with um, the canola oil. Okay. And that will help it not stick. When we did that marinade, you have to remember that we added a little bit of sugar. We've also got balsamic that has mm -hmm. sugar in it. It's going to smoke a little bit, OK? okay. Smoking now. It, yes, because it, it's hot. So let's turn our vent on, which is that little button right over there. And that's going to pull the smoke up. OK. That vent's over there. How's that going to help? It will. OK. All right, let's okay. put that down. Does it matter which side? No. Just put it down. Woo! Very good. So, but this little bit of smoke, it's going to be so worth it. I promise. Let me get the grandma timer. Grandma timer. Grandma, grandma alert. And um, so literally, it's just going to take three minutes on both sides. Why do we um, use a cast iron pan? Why couldn't I just use a skillet? Oh, honey, because cast iron holds the heat. It cooks so evenly. It really is just the absolute best way when you're getting ready to cook a steak. Now, so, is it hot? It's hot as the hinges of hell. Just kidding. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's You're sticky. Okay. It's, it's broken. No, I it's burned not. It. No, the reason that it's sticky is we had a little bit of sugar in the marinade. But look at that. It's beautiful. Okay. I got to tell you, I would have said that's burnt. No, it's caramelized. That is absolutely gorgeous. Oh I need the jaws of life Calm to down, get this thing up. Deep breath, deep breath. You're good. There you are. Oh boy. Oh look boy. Look at those beautiful marks. I You're mean, killing it. Looks pretty. It smells good. But see, this is where I would have felt like I did it wrong. Absolutely not. Okay. That's what you want. That's that wonderful crisp, right. caramelized. Oh, let's get on it. That's the heaven. I mean, come on. You got it. You got it. There you go. The stubborn Excellent. one. Okay, three minutes. That grandma. Beautiful. Three minutes on the other beautiful, side. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes. I think we're right there. We're about there. Just pull it up. Good. Look Excellent. at that. Excellent. It doesn't matter what side. Look at how beautiful that is. I must say it is. Let's put it over there and let it rest. Okay. 
Rest for 10 minutes. Be careful, that pan's hot. I know. The pan is hot. Wait, I'm sorry, is the pan hot? <laughs> Let me turn this off. Like, now it's not hot. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. What do you see right now with Putin, and do you think he's a rational actor? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? The sanctions did not deter. Can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. All right, let's get these veggies out of the All oven right. before I burn them. Ooh. Oh, they look good. I See? think they do. And now we've got our onions mm -hmm. and then our peppers. Should those have been browner or does that look good to I you? I think that's nice. Okay. I think that's really good. We're going to use these for fajitas after mm -hmm. we slice that skirt steak up. And then the Brussels sprouts, we'll have this that with our fajitas. beautiful filet. This mignon. is a fajita seed. You are absolutely right. All right, so now we have our vegetables out and we're ready to go with the, the, the filet mignon. Oh. Okay. We have two beautiful fillets. They're yes. so cute. Aren't they lovely? There's two beautiful one, one for, for me, you. one for you. One for me, exactly. Um, so, salt and pepper generously. If you don't season it well now, you literally have missed the boat. Sure. You said generous. Generously. Uh huh. Sides? Absolutely. If you're going to eat the sides, you want it to be seasoned, right? Okay. Just there. Good. Very nice. Let's do that on both fillets. And then we'll do the same thing with the pepper. Do you know if I served filet mignon to my husband? Oh, he'd lose his mind. I was going to say he'd have a heart attack, not because of the red meat, <laughs> but because I had actually I'm telling you, cooked something. No, He'll just be like, where's and the I And love, I love how you just did that. That was a oh. pro thing. Ooh, dang that it. was pro. You know what? I don't like things to go to waste. And there you are. OK, how do you think? Good? It's perfect. Okay. Absolutely great, perfect. Great, great. I want you to go ahead and at least smash your garlic. And let's go ahead and pull our rosemary off. Use the side of this. Hold on. Let's like do this? one clove at a time. Oh. And let's turn the knife away from us. Okay? Oh, okay. Good. And then, but I'm gonna and then you're going to use Should your Should I hand. cut these tips off before or no? Oh, no. It ain't going to do a damn thing. It ain't going to do anything. Okay. Perfect. Good. Now, is that smashed enough? Well, I mean, I, I would have put a little I mean, more effort into it. that doesn't seem that more smashed. Let's do it. Come on. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Very That's nice. That's good, That's but they're still it. big old. Well, if you want to okay. cut it up, you can. Well, it's do. not necessary. It's says more smash. Just... I want to be smashed. Okay, smash it. Smash it, smash and it. And not just with the margaritas. And not just with the margaritas. And That's then we... smashed enough, you're saying. You're beautiful. Okay. It's just it's just a quick, easy, okay. you know, it's just a throw in, just okay. a little flavor. Okay. And then we have our rosemary. At least from one sprig, is this the pull-off deal? Ah. Uh, is taught me it? That is it? it? Is it? I think it is. Okay. So we'll start at the top, and then you're going to pull back. Good. And now you can do it. And doesn't that make it so much easier? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, and then just pick off the little ones on the end. Mm -hmm. okay. I enjoy brushing oil. Okay. Now, before we go, we're already starting to smoke. Let's get that vent on, OK? Oh, Let's vent. turn the vent on. Hey. OK. Whew. So should we go for it? We're ready. Let's do it. OK. All right, so here we are. Oh, and hear that? So that's nice. That sizzle was ready. How long does it do? 
I think it's probably going to take about, you know, two to three minutes. We just want to get that beautiful caramelization. We want to lock in all of those juices. This is about like the crust, basically. Very much so. Should I be much. doing something with this butter to get ready for this whole scene? Well, I mean, you could go ahead and cut it. You think that's three tablespoons? No, that's not. Like there. Right there. That's right. And I a little that more bacon. isn't going to hurt this. Correct. And just know, Savannah, that smoke is normal. All right. All right. Oh, that's nice. That's very, very good. Isn't that? Nice? And now we want to go side, side, side. Okay, so that's how it should look. I love it. I love it. All right, so now this seems side. like a tricky little thing here. Why? Is You've it three got it. Okay, is it three minutes on each side? Do you want to go ahead and go ahead and do oh, the yes, other one too? Yeah. Beautiful. Are you just not concerned about my steak, Savannah? As long as yours is what perfect. Okay, yeah. Does so each, let's do a flip. Does each side, like, oh, geez. Oh, boy. You oh, can boy. do it. We, mm, Let it go. go. All right, and Look. then your guy goes over. Uh, I swear it is just like Mr. Miyagi and the Karate Kid. <laughs> I'm so proud. It really is. I'm so proud Look of you. Elizabeth. But Savannah. I mean, that was beautiful the way you just flipped oh, that. thank you. You're getting this. There's nothing like low expectations, Elizabeth. <laughs> Fun. All right, let's get that that side right there. I'm getting this the bottom, right? Uh, we're still doing sides, and yeah, then we're side, gonna side. Okay, and I still have this too. One more little side there. Very this nice. This one doesn't have another side, interestingly. Okay, so then we have the bottom. <laughs> like some people. Oh. But wait, now should we do the other? This is still a rare side. And should so I do now that? we'll put that one down. Get and on while down. that one's working, mm -hmm. then we're gonna do our little pan sauce. Okay. So we'll add our butter. <laughs> and I'm just throwing it in there. Yeah, throw that in. Fun. And then you can kind of hold the pan with the towel, okay? Be very careful. Mm, and no. now let's add our garlic and our rosemary. Now look how it looks like it's burning. I'm it's sorry. It's not. It's just, okay. it's not. Just it's throw good. this all in. Throw it in. Just sprinkle it around. Very good. And then we have this spoon and we're going to just baste it. Be real careful of that So what's basting? That just pan. spooning it on? Uh -huh. Just fill up a nice big spoon and pour it over. Mm. Oh, look at you. Off to me. Okay, that's it. Come Keep on. going. Is it already like the leaves and the bits are there? Uh huh. Now is it Very bad that nice. I just moved it? It's perfectly fine. Okay. Look at that. I mean, that looks like that's it. Come to mind. That is a tell. That's it. I need that's it right what now. You're just looking like for. that. Keep basting. Uh huh. And now we're getting ready. One more baste. When we put our thermometer in, you want to be really careful that we go right into the middle of this steak, okay? okay. If you go all the way to the bottom, it's going to give us a false read. It'll be too okay. hot. Oh. So just stick it in. Let's go all the way to the middle. Right now, we're at 74 degrees on okay. this thermometer. I want to go like in the middle. Uh-huh. Are you in the middle? I feel like I am. Okay, good. So this is going to be a team effort. Look at how it's coming up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hold this. You're going to put one hand here and one pan there. Yeah. And then we're going to take it to the oven. Oh, but we didn't check the other one. Do you what? want me to take this out? No, no, no. It's fine. They're the same size. They're okay. going to cook just about the same. Do you want me to take this out now? No, it's going to go into the oven with the thermometer. It's an oven read. Isn't that go fancy? In the oven? Well, this is going to stay out. That's going to stay in. Wow. And okay. we're going to do this together. How we... Now Which the way? oven's hot. Go on in. So if you were at home by yourself, yeah. Yay! You would wait and you would put your you would put your thermometer in now, and then um, you would shut it. And look at it here. Look at there. Wow! Isn't that fun? And then we could even turn on an oven light if we want to look at it in here. So we want to get up to about, well, 127. Okay. Because once it comes out, the temperature is going to raise a few more degrees. Okay. 130 is going to be a perfect medium rare. Okay. So we'll just sit here and let this So you do 127 up. figuring it's going to continue to cook when it's out on the... Correct. It's, How long in the oven is that's it really? why I mean, it's like, what, four minutes, yeah. three minutes? So it's quick. Okay. It is quick, and, so, and that is the thing that's a little unnerving mm -hmm. because no, it's not hard, it's just fast. You just got to be so ready to roll. So sides and ready to roll. I mean, seriously, would your husband not die? And you can do this at home. You'd be dead. I'd be to have to step over his dead body. <laughs> he died in shock, and I'm like, excuse me. Well, I made Hold two on, steaks, but I now you died in shock. So I'll have to eat both steaks myself. Or one degree. Okay, there we go, 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 go. Okay, now where do I put it though? All right, we're going to put it back on our induction. Okay? Oh, jeez. It's, it's so, I would right. be like, it's dead. Be I died Wait, here. Let's focus, focus, Holy deep crap. breath, and we're going to focus. Oh, jeez. This is terrifying. Ah! Shoot. That one's on you. Okay. <laughs> where do I put it? <laughs> right there. It looks incredible. Please, I would if you just look at that? It's absolutely beautiful. Remember that time you burned me with the thermometer? No, I don't. It's a Savannah, hot pan. I don't remember that. 
So where do I put these? I should take them off yes, the hot pan. Yes, take it off the hot pan. These look delicious. And then let me grab our sprouts. Yeah. And we'll scrape them on and then this one is going to be done. We'll grab our vegetables. Okay. Is it okay that they've just been sitting on those? They haven't like continued to burn or anything? No, yeah, not at all. Not at all. Just kind of add those to this. Teamwork makes the dream work. That's it. So now let's grab our beautiful skirt steak. Mm. It's been resting. Yeah. So now all of the juices have reabsorbed into the fibers. Let's move this here. We can still use those. Should tongs. I serve it or no? Should I we're going to cut it. We're oh, going to okay. thinly slice it. And this, without a doubt, is probably one of the most important things. We are going to cut this across the grain. So do you see these long, these long fibers that are yes. going this way? Yeah, I guess. All right. So if we were to cut it with those, yeah, I would have followed then, the line. I mean, if we did this. It is going to be so tough in your mouth, you're not going to be able to chew it. Wow. So then we will cut this way. And you want to kind of do it on the bias. So just a little bit of a um, angle. Okay? Okay. All right, now I know you can do this. Very no, okay, nice. Yoda. Very nice. There is no try, there is only do. Says but look, Yoda. and there you are. I do. I mean, figure that out. Like, this is just have, wonderful. Like, isn't it funny that like someone figured out at some point that we need to go across the yeah. grain, and now you know what they're talking so this about. This is this, and now I'll go like this. Perfect right? across the grain, and that is going to make sure that every single bite mm -hmm. is so tender and so delicious and so flavorful. Mm -hmm. You're not even going to believe it. It's taking all of my self control not to just start eating this. <laughs> Always remember though, Savannah, that since you're the chef, mm -hmm. you get to have the chef special. Okay. You know, which is just like one little piece, like before oh. it goes. Well, mm, oh, this you gotta make sure it's amazing. Taste you know? Test? Okay, let me finish this and I'm gonna do oh, it. Oh, is I'm sorry, I'm making you do all the work and I'm just sitting over here enjoying oh, myself. Oh, I love it. Oh, is it incredible. really good? Mm -hmm. It's absolutely delicious. I hate these last little bits. That's where that's where it's like the risk of mm -hmm. blood is high. Okay, I'm gonna take a little chef's special. But because we did that marinade, the caramelization, you know, it's got that little bit of crunch, that beautiful Real nice. depth of flavor, that little bit of sweetness. Mm. So let's add it to our tray okay. here. Tongs? What? Yeah, let's okay. do tongs. Tongs are going to be perfect. Best steak I ever made. Only steak I ever made, but. Is yeah. it really? Mm -hmm. You should be very, very proud of yourself. Is, I mean, is this it? Is it dinner this served? This is it, honey. I mean, we can go ahead and take this over to the table. Okay, yay. And I'll grab these beautiful steaks. In the City of Angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. What do you see right now with Putin, and do you think he's a rational actor? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? The sanctions did not deter. Can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. In the City of Angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter, in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet, right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. I can't believe it. Yeah, it doesn't get any better. Oh Absolutely gosh. does oh. not get any better. It looks incredible. And a margarita. But so see, you could serve this with the flour tortillas yeah. and the pico de gallo and cheese, or you could do that with the mashed potatoes and maybe some roasted carrots. Whatever your kids love, now you know how to roast every vegetable that there is. This is the first time I've made a steak and the first time I've roasted a vegetable. Cheers! Not my first margarita. <laughs> no. We Let's are, do this. We're good at this. Mm -hmm. This is so fun. Okay, so what do we do? Let's do a little bit oh, yeah. of this. Come to mama. 
And then here we are with those and beautiful roasted vegetables know, that you I love did. It. You know, it's that moment right before you cut into your steak that you kind of take that breath, wondering, you know, was it? Yeah. Was it cooked properly? Well, that's what Is I, it just like I like? Look, uh, it. It's so oh. tender. Oh my gosh. Oh my this God. is my Christmas card. That's it. That should be absolutely. I mean, this looks incredible. That doesn't get okay, any let's better. Let's taste it. Delicious. I okay. gotta say. I am sorry. Mm. You killed it. So absolutely good. killed it. It's so tender. Let me try these Brussels. And I love. Mm. Not mom's frozen. The aromatic of just that little bit of garlic and rosemary that we threw in at the last minute was beautiful. It is really delicious. Okay, now I gotta try skirt steak. Tender, not chewy, because mm -hmm. we cut it across the grain. And that's the key. I dinner. might have added a little more salt. And that's fine. Lesson learned. So now you know. We've opened up so many possibilities to you because you saw two ways to make a steak, one with a marinade, one without, and then we know exactly how to roast vegetables. So you've got everything from roasting an onion and peppers if you wanted to make fajitas, all the way to beautiful Brussels sprouts or butternut squash. I mean, it's unbelievable what you can do now. I know, it's like, so could you, are you saying that like other cuts of steak I could prepare in the same way? Absolutely, so it doesn't matter whether it's a ribeye, or if you are doing a filet like we did today, it's the same method. It just depends on the cut of the meat. You're either gonna marinate it and have to be very careful with the way you cook it, or you're gonna go sear it on all sides and go in the oven to finish. Just, so you've done it. Now I can make anything. You really can. Just, Any just, sort of protein and vegetable. I just have one final question. What is that? Is the pan hot? <laughs> Honey, that pan is hotter than the hinges of hell. <laughs> How about the streak? It's cold as ice. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Good morning, breaking news, no deal. The U.S. caught off guard after Poland announces an offer to send its fighter jets to Ukraine using a U.S. airbase in Germany. But the Pentagon says no way, wary of a direct NATO confrontation with Russia. Just ahead, where the invasion and the resistance stand this morning. Disturbing new worries surfacing overnight at the Chernobyl nuclear site. And for the first time, the former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Ivanovich, speaks out here live. Skyrocketing gas prices jump another eight cents overnight, another new record high after the president announces a ban on all imports of Russian oil, gas, and energy. I'm going to do everything I can to minimize Putin's price hike here at home.